Happy birthday. Happy birthday to us. To Snarf Talk. <laughs> so, before the episode started, I realized, I mean, I knew this was episode 52. 52, one year, yeah, right? Like the new 52. That's what we're going to call we, our next season. The new 52. That is great because we do start a new season after this. Yeah. So that'll, Anyway. That'll be episode 53's title, the new 52. Yep. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. Yep. Um, but what I realized today is that we're recording this on the 14th of November. Okay. So you guys aren't going to hear this for a couple weeks, whatever. Yeah. This is going to come out after um, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Right. After Thanksgiving. But um, this is the 365th day of Snarf Talk. Wow. Our very first episode came out November 15th. Today's the 14th, 365 days. Nice. Boom. Was there a leap Congratulations. year? Congratulations. It wasn't a leap year. That's the that's 2020. Yep. Ooh, really? Is 2020 a leap year? It every, is. Every four years. I'm There's excited. also a secondary congratulations in order, besides congratulating the entire podcast. Real. Yeah. I'm nice. sorry. I thought Thank we were doing you. golf class. The secondary congratulations is that Chris finally finished harvest yay he got all of his crops harvested into his bosom yeah he wrapped them <laughs> in like a big bear it's true ate them and it's now going to hibernate <laughs> for months yeah no it's a good feeling man it is a good feeling isn't it but yeah. you told me the other day that i think it was yesterday that you felt like you didn't have anything done yeah, it's weird. I mean, I don't know if that's like something weird. to do with this year, but like I, I f- feel like it should be this big monument to the end of a really, really shitty year. Yeah. But like I just felt like discouraged. Really? At the end of it. Yeah, I don't know why. I know a good therapist you could talk to, and I've got some Xanax. Oh, okay. I'll try that. Okay. <laughs> I feel like all of those things could help you right now. But either way, you wrapping all of the grain and a big warm hug yeah bear hug because you're like a bear yeah i i like that image that's all (laughs) congratulations thank you way to go on getting done thank you feel good no big breakdowns right like nothing huge besides your stirrator that you need to have a man live in the bin yeah nothing too serious (laughs) no broke down the stirrator a lot about probably i lost count of about 20 times i'm a farmer and i have stirrators yeah that was my first viral video. It was. I didn't produce it. I was just in it. Mm-hmm. It Starring. was. Look it up. What's it called? I don't remember. I'm a farmer and I have stirators. Something like that. If you look yeah, Google YouTube. that and you'll find it. Chris is in it, and uh, he's much younger. He's probably got a lot more hair on the top of his head. Yeah, I have less probably on my face, face yeah. now than on that video. Oh, really? I don't know. Check hmm. it out. Well, that's all I had for that. We also have uh, another special guest we in the do. house for his second second appearance. Two timer. Oh, we got a two timer over here. Oh, oh big two timer. Oh. The last time you were on, I looked it up. It was number episode thirty six. It was our top ten sitcoms. Oh, really? Yeah, you were on that episode. That was a good episode. It was really good episode. We got, Check uh, it out. We got Alex here. Today. Hello. Hey, Alex. Hi. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. Actually, I kind, oh. of, I kind of invited myself in. So. And, well, Chris texted me and said, hey, Alex is going to join tonight. I was like, perfect, because this is all the, the other weird thing. So Chris posted a thing today on social media about Thor and Mr. Rogers, and I literally tried all day to try to get that on uh, our social media, and it was failing every time. The apps were collapsing on me. The world came down. I felt like I was drowning. I had to talk to my therapist and eat Xanax still didn't fix the problem. And then I couldn't work. But then Chris, I went on a, an actual physical computer to try to post this thing. And the very first post I saw was the exact same post I was trying to put up that Chris ended up putting up, which is weird. ESP. It is. We're basically a married couple. <laughs> we know what each other are thinking. But before that I was talking to a man at work and a man that I'm not married to. Uh, I just work with him. And he said, uh, he's like, Hey, where's that one guy at? I said, what one guy? He's like, well, not dude and not pagoda. 
He's like, what was the other guy you had on? I said, Tim. He's like, no, not Tim. I said, oh, Alex. He said, yeah, Alex, where's he at? I was like, oh, I like, I don't know. We need to have him back on. And it was literally like an hour later, Chris texted me, hey, Alex is coming on tonight. It's weird, man. I was like, awesome, because we were literally just talking about it. Is that serendipity? Uh, I don't know. I think so. I think that's I, more John Cusack was not involved. involved with this at all. John Cusack is involved in everything You've in ever my done. life. Really? Yeah. He's You're, outside right now. Because I box. carry him in my soul. <laughs> He's like sweet 16. Yeah. yeah. You do? Yeah. You carry John Cusack in your soul? Absolutely. Hmm. Huh. That's strange. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, Chris. <laughs> so uh, we had a lot of good discussion before this podcast started, and Chris yelled at me the majority of the time about recording. And what we could have done is record that for Patreon. Yeah. Did you um, forget that we have a very exclusive channel called patreon.com slash snarf comics? You know, I didn't forget, but I'm just not good at recording that stuff. Yeah. I take that back. I'm not good at editing that out of the recording. I take that back. I'm la- I'm too lazy <laughs> to edit that out of the recording to put it into its own thing. Well, just so you know, um, in the future, Jerry will be better at that. And you should head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash snarfcomics, where you can subscribe for what, Jerry? Oh, man, you could subscribe for... As little as one dollar. One dollar a month. We have a five dollar level where you get bonus podcasts. So if you like this podcast, you can get more. Uh, yes. Ten dollar level, you get all of that. Plus, you get t shirts. Every time we come up with a new t shirt, we just ship you one. Which we have. Yeah. We have come up with a new t shirt. Yeah. New t-shirt. It is going to the presses soon. I actually have an idea for a t shirt. It's something that you said on the podcast. It's really funny you brought that up because one of my ideas was to do a listener contest to come up with a t shirt idea. Oh, that's a good so idea. So you just win it. So just tell us the idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so now you win the contest. Uh, congratulations, Alex. Do you guys remember when you guys were talking about vision and glasses? And Jerry, you made the comment that without my glasses, I can't see much, but yes. with them, I can see tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was dying. Yeah, that's what I've always told people because everybody's always made fun of me about how thick my glasses are. I said, with these suckers, I can see tomorrow. And I think you just put like glasses across the chest and then on the back, that's what it says. I can see tomorrow. That's a long, long quote, though. It's not, though. Well, we got to get our logo on there, too. That can be the goat my right at, shirt. Right at the top of the collar. I like it. I like the goat. We need to do. We need to do a new goat. Yeah, we do. We need a new goat. A nude goat? Yes. <laughs> yes. Completely <laughs> nude. Shorn. Shorn goat. Yeah. So I don't know if a lot of people... Have we ever put out our caricature? That's a Patreon exclusive. Yeah, That's that'll, gonna be a, be, that'll be out. So there's a, a caricature. Alex has seen it. I've seen it. Of yeah. us that we got at Wizard World. That's hot and steamy. It is very hot and steamy. And uh, we're going to put that on our Patreon exclusive thing. So there's like an activity feed. That show we can put like sometimes we'll post exclusive stuff like uh, script pages, drawings. That oh, that's what I need to do. I need to put out another that. script page for. Uh, this is a long way of saying if you like the show and you want to support us, um, just go to patreoncom slash comics. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month, but for five dollars a month or more, you get all kinds of good stuff. So just go on there and don't be a free rider. Right, I'm no longer a free rider. That's right. A dollar a month, you're gonna get stickers though. Yeah. We're going to send you some stickers. And if you want to be a free rider, fine. But here's the deal. $5 a month. What did we figure out? This is like a half a pack of cigarettes a month. Yeah. This is like two Diet Cherry Pepsis a month. I uh, I hand-delivered some stickers to a Patreon subscriber uh, not too long ago, and he was ecstatic. They're good stickers. He loved them. He's like, I really love stickers. And I'm going to put these on everything. I'm going to put them on his skateboard. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he has a skateboard, but probably. I should ask him. Hey, Caleb, you got a skateboard? Shut up. Caleb Koss. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? So today is going to be, we're, we've got some news. We've got some what, what we're watching. i got a ton of what I've been watching. Do you? Yeah. Okay, good. A ton. Um, I've, I've got quite a few. Well, yeah, i got a few. Um. So news, what you're watching, but the the meat and potatoes of this episode is going to be our top 10 holiday movies. Yes. So, so stick around and we'll get to that. Yeah, we're, we're coming up to the holidays. We're after Thanksgiving. 
Uh, things are happening. And we Everybody to talks give, about we, Christmas. We want to give you enough time to digest so you got time. To- we don't have to give anybody time. People were decorating for Thanksgiving before Halloween. Yeah. Thank, or uh, Christmas. for Christmas before Halloween. There was Christmas crap everywhere. I seen people put up a Christmas tree before Halloween. My neighbors haven't taken their Christmas lights down from last year. Well, that's really? just smart. It is. Smart. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the way to go. Especially when you're out in the country. Who cares? Yeah, that's right. You know, just don't turn them on and nobody notices during the day or night. <laughs> nobody notices. But when you live inside of a town. Well, here's I, I and you always, have neighbors right next to you. People notice and they're like, mm, my neighbors Jim got these Christmas us. lights. They've been on all year. But last year during Christmas season was my favorite. They just moved in. They got all these lights out. I Wait, live, is that the is that the Popeye's? Popeye's guy? Chicken. OK, yeah, I live a half a mile from town. Yes. Like right outside town. And last year, somebody put on this amazing, amazing Facebook page called Amazon. <laughs> they said, hey, if you haven't had the time to take the trip outside of town, I suggest heading out west to check out the Christmas lights at this house. And I said, it's a half a mile outside <laughs> of town. <laughs> heading you out west. You can see it from town. <laughs> Blaze a trail out west. <laughs> Pack a lunch, because it's because it's a doozy. Take of some a ride. cheese and wine. Yeah. Lay out a picnic blanket. Yeah. Oh, a picnic. <laughs> that was a uh, that was picnic uh, basket. Yeah. What's that guy called? Yogi, Yogi Bear. I couldn't think of it. Not Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> he was the catcher for the Yankees. Yeah, he was full of wit and wisdom. Yeah. Wit and wisdom. I read a book by him once. He wrote a book? Yeah, Yogi Bear. Yeah, it was really bad. No, Yogi Bear. Yeah, he did. Yogi Bear probably wrote a book, too. <laughs> yeah, he could have. <laughs> he could have about eating sandwiches. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, sandwiches. <laughs> yes. Yeah, rolling right in there. <laughs> we're going to talk about a little news first. So, um, Did you see the new Sonic the Hedgehog trailer? I didn't watch it because at first I thought it was fake. No, it's not fake. It's not fake. No. Turns out it's real. They, and they redesigned the character. Did you see it, Alex? No. They completely redesigned the character. And which I'll, they should have. Which I was again, like, I thought the whole thing was overblown and stupid. He had teeth. Yeah. And that I, drove I, everyone nuts. I yeah. thought the whole thing was stupid. <laughs> However, I will say this trait, like, that first trailer was awful. Remember how bad it was? Yes. It was set to Gangsta's Paradise, which made no sense whatsoever. And, uh, but this trailer really made it like look like a movie that I would like to see. The trailer is infinitely better. Really? Yeah, outside of just the look of Sonic, the trailer is just a lot better. What are you doing? That there? was weird. How did that come up? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I thought it was interesting. But I, I really think it's cool that, I don't know if it's cool, good or bad, that like just a bunch of people bitching on the internet are enough to get a studio yeah. to completely redesign I mean, their movie. All, uh, so I'm a big Redditor. I've, I go on Reddit all the time. The entire community of Reddit was like completely against everything about Sonic the Hedgehog. And it was like a huge revolt. Yeah. And yeah, they those people got it changed and they decided to make a new one. And I think, and, and if you think about it, if that many people are going to complain about a movie, that many people will watch it if it's fixed. Right. Well, that's true. Oh, yes, they will. If you're going to take the time to to complain that much about a character that you probably still watched, I guarantee you all of those people watched the original movie just to see how bad it was, to complain about it again, once you fix it and you put out a trailer that's decent, that shows like a, a, a decent Sonic the Hedgehog, they're going to watch it. Not only was the character looking better, like the trailer was better. It made it seem like a real movie. That first trailer made it seem like some weird, like low budget thing. But then you're like, wait a second, Jim Carrey's in it? Yeah. And He's like, in the new James one too, Marston? right? Yeah. Like the, is this like a sequel? No. It's, or it's a completely separate movie. The first one never happened. They never made They threw it in the garbage. Oh, it's it never came out? No. It's the same movie. They just changed Sonic. Oh, I did not know wow. that. I thought the first one came <laughs> no. out. 
That's why I didn't know what sequels are you talking oh, about. Oh, I thought I first thought first ones. Oh, that's I thought it came out. Mm-mm. I completely thought it came no. out. And so here's what happened, Jerry. They had a trailer. No, yeah. I, everybody bitched about what Sonic looked like. So they redid Sonic and, and I released remember, a new trailer. So I remember talking about it on the podcast, but I had just assumed by this time the movie came out already. No, they pushed it was supposed to come out in November. And they pushed it to February, I think. Oh, I didn't know that. But okay. anyway, this now I understand. This trailer made it seem like a lot more bigger budget. Like it looked like a cool movie. I'll definitely watch it. Well, it's definitely bigger budget because they completely redid Sonic. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't even imagine how much that cost. Well, I don't think CGI is cheap. No, especially like on a cyber, supersonic speed character. <laughs> True. I mean. They just have Hedgehogs. slow motion and they fast forward. It was the first one was weird though. You never really knew what was going on. It honestly felt like like a weird, low budget movie. And it this, was strange. This seems like a funny, fun movie. I, I'm I'm gonna see it. That first it. trailer, if there wasn't any famous people in it, I would have just assumed it was somebody ha- that had way too much free time. Yeah, like a YouTube de- thing. <laughs> developed their own Sonic the Hedgehog CGI character and yeah. then made a trailer. Yeah. If it didn't have Jim Carrey and right. it James Marston, is that yeah. the guy's name? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, looks cool. I, I There's don't a, they do a scene. They do a bit where Sonic is playing baseball with himself, but he's playing all the positions. Oh, really? <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So hedgehogs aren't fast. <coughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Sonic. Oh, yeah, My not... niece has a hedgehog. Do you think it's fast? Um. I don't know. I've never seen it. Where in real where life. did that come from? Where did that trope come from of Sonic? I don't think it's a trope because well, to be like a, trope, a trope, it has to be like a thing that happens all the time. I mean, it's happened all the time for Sonic, right? And he's a hedgehog. I mean, it happened one time, multiple times. He got struck by lightning during during a particle accelerator explosion, just like the Flash. Is that true? <laughs> Because I believe you. Because I believe I you. Like I feel true. like that's true. Well, we <laughs> oh, say it is. in the in the uh, trailer though, he reads. He's got, there's like a stack of thousands of Flash comic books, and he reads all of them like super fast. Sonic does. Makes sense. It looks good. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, I know this kind of bleeds into what we're watching, but um, big news, and I think we can just do it in this section. Something big happened. And I wish we weren't lagging so behind in our episodes because yeah. people are going to be like, why haven't you talked about this yet? But yeah. uh, Disney Plus Disney came Plus. Out. It came out yesterday? Two mm-hmm. days ago? Like Tuesday. Two days ago. Two days ago. And did you guys, you guys all subscribed? I yes. Think it, right? Correct. Yeah. So first impressions? Amazing. Really? Yeah. My first impression was that Mandalorian is just out of this world. And We're going to talk about that specifically next, but right. And uh, I'm just talking like the app in general and all the content on there. Well, so I've had an issue with it lagging a lot, and there was an actual like national news article that came out about how Disney wasn't prepared for how many people. Well, nobody ever is. Yeah, it, are, it are happens, coming into it. So, it happens for everything. everything. Yeah, absolutely. So the the last couple of days, mine has been lagging a lot and i know it wasn't the internet it was mine hasn't really just the app in general has had a really hard time loading things it'll buffer like once or twice a show it no mine was just the app in general was having a hard time loading and it would tell me that it would come up first and it would say uh this page is not available at this moment oh and i'd have to go i could go to like movies or series and it would load those but my like my home page it would not load oh and uh, I didn't have that problem. It took a little bit because I'm a Disney stockholder. Maybe. And they probably searched that. Yeah. They figured can, that out. Yeah. Give me specific. Well, no, you check the box when you sign up. No, you don't. Are you a Disney? Stockholder? No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I did buy stock about a month before this launch because I knew it was going to blow up. It's gone up a lot. Has it really? Yeah, it's gone up quite a bit. Are you selling? No. Sell, sell, sell. No, they got 20 million subscribers the first day. It can't go up any higher than no, what 10 it is million, now. 10 million. 10 million subscribers and 3 million app downloads. So like mobile device and downloads. I think the 10 million was specifically paid subscribers. Yeah. They weren't counting people like you 
a lot of people like if you have Verizon, you get a free year. People like me, Chris. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is that I a found short that, joke? That out about fifteen minutes too late. <laughs> I still think if you sign up, it'll it'll tack it on the end. That's what I've read. Sign up for what? Oh, you're saying like the Verizon thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think you could do it. Well, I did the bundle. I need to do that because I'm I am playing for Hulu, but I had already prepaid for my Disney Plus for like three years. So, right. But I just wanted to see because I've never used Hulu. I wanted to see what that was all about. Oh, you've never done Hulu? No, but never I'm been really, on a Hulu ride. Huh? Really debating on getting rid of my cable. Direct. Oh yes, Definitely. get rid of it. There's no reason to have. It. I was so scared about getting rid of. Just put. Let's get an antenna. Like any dish whatsoever. But once I did, and it was because I moved, that's the only reason why I did. Once I moved and didn't have dish anymore, um, I realized like it's completely useless. I don't need it in the slightest, besides different sporting events. But now like I'll just ESPN to, Plus. I'll just go to a bar. Right. Well, the big thing with Amazon now, though, is Amazon has like uh, Thursday night football. Mm-hmm. They You can get that live on Amazon Prime Video. Yeah. Um, and then Hulu will have ESPN on it at certain times. You can get ESPN, uh, Monday night football because all Monday night football is on ESPN. So you could get that on Hulu. Well, now if you get the bundle anyway, it comes with ESPN. Right. But now if you get the bundle, yes, you, you will have all that. I'm just saying like at first, that's what I was nervous about. Just get an antenna. Huh? You have Verizon. Yes. You get Thursday night, two local games on Sundays and. I do? Monday night, yeah. On my phone? Yeah. But then I don't get it on my TV. Just cast do you it have to your a TV, ca- man. castable TV? Oh, I could do that. You're right. Yeah. Because that's my plan. There's just so many options. Here's the deal. <laughs> Direct completely annoyed me. And Jerry's got one. It's called the Amazon Recast. Mm-hmm. And it's an over-the-air antenna DVR. Really? Plus Fire Stick in one. Yep. Well, no. You well, have to buy the fire stick. Whatever. But it, it's... I have those. It'll record your antenna, like CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox. It'll record it. It stores it. It's got a hard drive. Yeah, so all it's I've got the uh, the two terabyte, and you just plug in your coax cable from your antenna right directly to the box, and then it connects itself Wi-Fi to your uh, fire stick. Yeah, and any I can fire record. stick you have in your house on any TV, you can access that. And with a two terabyte hard drive, or is it four terabyte? I think I got the four. They have a four and a two. I think I got the four because I got it on Amazon Prime Day and had a $100 discount because I was an Amazon Prime member. Um, So I got the bigger one. And I can record like 540 hours of HD movie on there. Like that's ridiculous. 540 hours of movies. Right. It's unbelievable. Like, so I've. You'd fill it up. You can fill it up quick, though. You yeah. could, I guess, if <laughs> yeah, you tried. Yeah, but my DirecTV but... one is always full. But it's only like 200 gigabytes. I mean, it's nothing. Right. Anyway, yeah, four Disney terabytes Plus. is a lot. Yeah, Disney Plus came out. So my original, like, after looking at everything that's on there, because I spent the day, because I, I was at work, I couldn't watch anything, but I spent part of the day after I got it, looking through the catalog of stuff. And, uh, it's significant, man. man. There's a lot on it. It blew me away. And it's, I feel like our generation is the perfect people to have this app. It's a lot of nineties stuff. Oh yeah. It's what I grew up with. uh, Literally the wife and I, we, I just started on the PlayStation. I'm like, all right, let's see if this Disney channel movies on there. Oh yeah. And I just kept going. Just all, all the, Made for TV Disney Channel movies. I'm like, it's unbelievable the amount of content that's on there from our childhood. We started with the kids. We were watching X Men a little bit. That was great. I forgot how good that is. Yeah, I watched the first two episodes and I'm like, this was a kid show. The first night, yeah, it's like so emotionally, you know, advanced. That's why we're tough (laughs) people, Chris. Um, What jumped out at me? Gargoyles is on there. Yeah, Um, gargoyles on there. Great. Um, Darkwing Duck. We started watching Darkwing Duck. I watched that. So I haven't watched any of it Six yet. o'clock in the morning, the kids come in. The morning it came out, and they came in the room, woke us up, and I'm like, hey, Disney Plus is on. So I downloaded it, and we started watching Darkwing Duck, watched the first episode of that. Whew, that was a rough ride. Really? Yeah. 
Maybe, but I think it gets better. It's the is the pilot episode. I've been really excited about it because I haven't seen it in years and years and years, and that's all I've wanted to watch, and I still haven't watched it yet. That was on there. Um, a lot of great older movies like Swiss Family Robinson is yeah. one that jumped out at me. Apple Dumpling Gang. Apple Dumpling Gang. Yeah, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah, a lot of great. I grew up on those movies. My mom had all of those old mm-hmm. movies. Um, that was cool. Other, other than that, like. All the old Disney movies are on there. I mean, The Great Mouse Detective is on there. It's yeah. one of my favorites. Not um, every movie, but it's amazing because the um, first stuff you just see on that first screen has got to be a one one hundredth of the actual amount on there. Because if you go watch a show and it gives you recommendations, they're completely other shows that you don't see on the main screen. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. The stuff you see on the main screen is nothing compared to what's Oh, yeah. I've there. just I've went on movies and series A to Z. Oh, wow. You really got after it. I went through all of them. Wow. Everything. So you didn't have time to Looking watch anything, it. but you had time to just go through. Correct. I can't like physically watch a show, but eh, I can do that. Yeah. You probably could have watched the show. No, I can't. Because people would hear it. Headphones. So. I can't wear headphones. I got too many people to point at. <laughs> um, I did check out the Marvel section. Um there isn't a ton of movies, but there's a lot of cartoons I, I haven't seen. Tons like, of like Spider Man stuff. Oh yeah. There was there was like there's like five different Spider Man shows on there. Yeah, and I've only really ever watched the original and then some of Which one's the original? Because I, I was never well, aware I'm of I'm not which talking one about the one from like the seventies, which no, is no, on no, there. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm not. That's on there though. Um and Spider Woman, which is an old one too. Yep. Um I'm talking about the nineties one, which is on there. What's that called? Um, Because there's like Ultimate Amazing Spider Man. Yeah. There's Ultimate Spider Man. There's Amazing Spider Man. Amazing Spider Man, I think, is the one from the 90s. Then there's Spider Man Unlimited, which was late 90s. Um, I've never seen that one. Um, Ultimate Spider Man, I've seen some of that. I've seen a lot, some of all of them. But there's there's a bunch of Spider Man stuff that I've never seen. I I never watched any of that when I was a kid. I had forgot about the Silver Surfer cartoon. I didn't even know um, that. Went from the 90s. And then there was the Fantastic Four from the 90s. I remember yes, that. Yes, I like, remember that. I'm excited to watch some of that. And like the Star Wars section too, um, not a ton, obviously, because there's just not a ton of Star Wars stuff. But had all the movies, except for Solo. I don't think that was No, there. yeah, it's, it's on there. Oh, is it on there? It's on there. And uh, then they got Rebels and Clone Wars. And the new one, Resistance. Resistance. On so which one of those was I supposed to watch? Rebels. Rebels. And Clone Wars, which they're both awesome. Oh, really? They're so both which one, incredible. Which one should I watch first? Well, uh, Clone Wars is better, but Rebels is great, and the ending is unbelievable. Oh, you should Rebel. probably re- watch Rebels because I think they're going to start tying Rebels. It was a very popular show in with a lot of the um, Star Wars universe. Okay, because you've watched all of that, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Twice, I think. It's really good. Twice you've watched it. It's twice. not that many. There's only like four seasons, five seasons. Okay. Um, hmm. But yeah, they're big release, obviously. And I was hoping there would be more original stuff released right away. Um, yeah, there isn't too there much. There isn't a ton. There's Their that. big one is obviously The Mandalorian, which yeah. there's. Um, so if you're listening to this, I know it's December, but the first episode just came out Tuesday. There's a new one that comes out tomorrow. We're yeah. recording on a Thursday. Yep. So. Let's talk about the Mandalorian and spoilers. It's going to be spoiler ridden, but not terrible. Terribly spoiler, terribly spoiler. ridden. Uh, but if, a month, a later. month later. Yeah. So I'm not too <laughs> worried about it. Um, but if you haven't watched the Mandalorian yet, I guess you can skip this part. Um, Correct. What, what did you think about it? Alex. So I had no knowledge of what it was going to be about. I actually forgot it was going to be a, a show. I thought it was a movie. So, like, when I sat down on the couch and watched it, I think I watched it Wednesday. And, like, I was like, all right, I'm buckling in for two hours. And then I'm like. That was short. There, there's, like. 38 minutes. Yeah, yeah. What, what is going on? But, like, I had no knowledge of what it was about. I knew it was a bounty hunter. But other than that, I didn't wait, know. Wait a minute. How familiar are you with Star Wars lore? Like the Star Wars universe. Uh, I've seen all the movies, the but, the, the non animated movies. Okay, but that's as deep as you go. But you just weren't you just weren't aware of like Boba Fett and where he came from. 
So in his is world. this Boba Fett? Or no, is, no, it's not. But no. Boba Fett was a Mandalorian. He was from Mandalore. Yeah, the planet Mandalore. Yeah, is known for having a very tough uh, native. I don't know. I guess if you'd call them human species. Yeah, they're a type of species. They're a different they're person. Humans, they're humans. They're guess. Mandalorians. They're Mandalorians, they're, but okay. they're they're very tough. They're tribal. Yep. Um, and there's actually warring tribes on Mandalore. Anyway, it, it gets taken over by the Empire at some point, and the gotcha. Mandalorians kind of are scattered across the universe. But they're known as like the deadliest and the strongest warriors. They actually put up the biggest, or they put up a huge resistance against the Empire. Um, but they were actually basically stabbed in the back from their tribal infighting. They talk about a lot of it in Rebels because one of the characters in Rebels, the main character, is Mandalorian. Okay, but isn't that why uh, Sabine Wren? Isn't that why a lot of them went to do bounty hunter stuff because they're really tough. They can handle themselves, and instead of working with others, they just decided to go out on their own. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And in if you go back to the Star Wars movies specifically, Attack of the Clones. Um, Jango Fett, who's Boba yeah. Fett's father, which is actually uh, Boba Fett is a clone of Jango Fett. Yeah, Whoa. Boba Fett's a clone. Yeah, um, right. but they actually base the entire clone army. They're all clones of Jango Fett, so they're all technically Mandalorians. So, yeah, how, how every. Does, how does that work too? Because like one of the first things that they talk about is how a Mandalorian isn't supposed to take off his helmet. How do they clone a guy if he's not supposed to take off his helmet? Well, they do. They do in the movies. So I don't know where that came from exactly. But they, yeah. I think they, it's just one of those things. That, I mean, he's obviously going to take off his helmet. Right. Like people show. mostly don't, you don't see You don't them. get a Pedro. Is it Pedro Pascal? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't get a super expensive popular actor and not make him take off his helmet. And not let him take his helmet off. Yeah. Um, but uh, the thing that jumped out at me was it's just like. Um, I, first of all, it was, it was beautiful. I mean, it was cinematography wise. Yeah, really it was good. really good looking. Um, and the practical effects I really liked. Mm-hmm. So the actual non CGI alien characters, it felt very much like the original star Wars series. And a lot of those characters, absolutely big time, the, all of the effects, everything that they were doing in that first episode felt like. Like a a new hope and return of the Jedi, like combined. It's a fist miss. It's a fist miss fist here miss. at Snarf Talk. Um, um, but it did, it did. I mean, I think the uh, the coolest thing for me was this was like an old but, school Clint Eastwood like spaghetti it, western. And and you said it in a text message that the night that I was watching it, but um, it was it felt a lot like Firefly. It reminded it, me a it, lot like Firefly. That was another thing I forgot. Yeah. That was the first initial vibe that I felt throughout the whole thing. I'm like, did Joss Whedon do this? Yeah. Because this feels exactly like Firefly. If you if you have never seen Firefly, look it up, find it, do whatever you got to do to watch that show. Yeah. And then go back and watch Mandalorian and you're going to realize like it is a space western that is set and they're up both, the exact I same mean, way. <clears throat> both of them are borrowing from the western genre that's why they feel yeah. similar oh yeah absolutely it's it's set up the same way but um i mean it's, this one it's more obviously on the, star this one wars more, more on the nose i mean it's a very up old nose. school western set in the star wars universe they do the showdown at high noon and the main yeah they do everything so i saw a uh um, thing there i follow a star wars um group on facebook and they had a, a post, and it said, "What was your favorite quote from the new Mandalorian uh, episode?" And every single person, almost everybody, put, "I have spoken." Oh, I have so spoken. the one guy that was riding on the mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know what those things were called. I don't remember, but every time he'd talk, he'd talk and talk and talk, and then he'd say, "I have spoken." Yeah, I thought that was and kind it was, of annoying. Actually. It was weird, but. <laughs> Every per every single person put that on there. Like that's the new thing. Oh. I have spoken. My favorite was the uh, that's Nick the Nolte shootout too. at the end. Oh really? Nick Nolte. The shootout at the end and the interaction between him and the droid. Yeah. Yes. That was the best part of it for me. He I agree. Good, he had some good lines in there too. I thought it was funny that the droid responded to him. Like they're obviously in the guild together. Uh, like the you know the bounty hunter guild five o the five hundred and first or five o first something guild I don't know right um and he 
Are you thinking of the 501st Legion? I was. That's but like the stormtrooper. Like, he, says, he says, I'm in the guild. Like, there's a bounty hunter guild right. that they're both in. And as soon as he said that, then the droid, like, responded to him. But I think it's weird that a droid would respond to him when they're both separate bounty hunters trying to collect on a bounty. Like, why did he, why would a droid want to work together with him when he's programmed to only get this one person? Well, maybe he's programmed not to kill other bounty hunters. Yeah, totally. yeah that's, that's the only explanation for it, but... I don't I know. Just I thought, thought that, that part was, was cool. That but it how is. they did that. I mean, I can't imagine how much they spent on that scene. But yeah. All the money, $15 million on one 38-minute episode. <sighs> Unbelievable. I somebody, thought it was going to be at least 50 minutes. Well, and but they're releasing a new one two days later. Right. Um, of all the good, I mean, for, well, I'll get in that part later, but the most striking thing to me that I really liked was, well, first of all, I thought that part was cool about the smelting the armor. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. clearly, like the specific Mandalorian armor, right. which is like a big deal, Mandalorian. Yes, armor. it is. Um, but my favorite part was the music. I thought the music was incredible, and it was like perfectly fit, and it was different. It wasn't like normal Star Wars music. It was Western music. It was yeah, mu- it was w- music it was. from a Clint Eastwood movie, and I thought that was just super cool how they did that. The whole thing, the way it's shot, the way it's put together, I. L- the, the biggest for me is that I wanted it to feel like old Star Wars, like an old Star Wars thing. Yeah. I didn't want it to be, you know, like I have nothing against the new movies whatsoever. The new movies don't don't necessarily feel like what it was to be like on Dagobah with Luke or in Tatooine with with Luke and to see the same people in the cantina. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the new movies don't necessarily feel that way. This absolutely does. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And yeah. this this one episode that we've seen so far has absolutely felt like the original Star Wars movies. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see where it goes. Um, I don't see how it could go any worse. Like, I don't... It can't get bad. No, I don't think so. No. And the ending of this... I literally sat forward in my chair. Yeah. Mind blowing. I so, sat forward in my chair and I was like, are you joking me? Like, what can you possibly, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily want to spoil and that. I think that honestly, the, they tell you the shows about him being a bounty hunter, but like that's over now. Right. What, 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 what could you do? The show's going to take a whole different direction because he's taking that baby. We're going to, oh yeah, the, he's taking that baby. Leon and the professional. Hey, Things did you? Weird. <laughs> that could be cool. That's a good move. So I wonder if they'll continue the whole Western theme, or maybe that was just like maybe every episode. No, I think it'll Did still they be steal our idea for Jetpack Samurai. Maybe where every issue is going to be a completely different, different theme. They could have those Star Wars assholes copyright stole snarf our talk, idea. and now we can sue them. Yeah. We copyrighted it. So did it seem like? I obviously I know Steven Spielberg has nothing to do with this, but it's did it seem to you at the end a little ET ish? Then when he stuck just, his finger out like this, yeah, I mean, I and guess. the other finger came up like this, coincidentally, yeah. And they, I mean, is that coincidence or is that like? Yeah, I think it's coincidence. I don't. I don't either. I think like we're gonna make fun I, of. I I don't even think it's make fun of. I think it's just try to find some sort of iconic image. image it's a very iconic you, looking image. How that yeah. it is, and then at the end of the episode. All of the art that came up oh, is just is amazing. I watched through the entire credits just to see the artwork. So did I, and that's when I was that's when I was texting you. I was like, "We gotta, we gotta have that type of art." So if we got a, we got a baby, whatever the species of Yoda is. I don't know what knows. the species is. Nobody knows. I don't think. So I got a question. Yes. Where in the universe does this take place? Is this? Oh, okay. It's post, post Jedi. Post Return of the Jedi. So is all we know. But that's it. Yeah. Is it post Force Awakens? We don't is it know. During that. the same time? I don't think we know any we of that. Know. I don't think so. I'm guessing it's before Force Awakens, I think but it's, after Return of the Jedi is yeah. my guess. I think it's in between that gap. I think it spans that gap. I think that's, it's I mean, if it's right after the Empire crumbles, which it is. Mm-hmm. So Darth Vader just died, right? This yes. is an interesting thing. They say the spoilers, ba- dude. <laughs> we said spoilers. They said the baby's fifty years old. 
right? Yes. Baby Yoda. And I guess according to somebody I read on the internet, Darth Vader would have been 50 years old at that point. So Anakin Skywalker would have been 50. I thought that was interesting. So Anakin Skywalker would have been 50 years old yeah. when he died. But born at the same time as that baby. Right. I don't know if that means anything, but I thought it was interesting. So Yoda was out, like, getting some, well, you know. I mean, up in the... there's another of Yoda's species um, in one of the pre- prequels, Yaddle, right? On the Jedi Council. There's another female. There is. There's yeah, a you're female. right. There's a female. Oh, so he was up in Yaddle. I think he was <laughs> yodling. You know, he was getting that Yaddle. Yoda was getting Yaddle. Yoda was Sex getting that Yaddle. Real. I think it was Yaddle, but I don't remember the name exactly. <gasps> <laughs> yaddle mm. <laughs> Give me that yaddle mm. Things are getting weird <laughs> That's a good one That's all I've waited for um, So yeah Yoda and Yaddle They, they banged they it up They were banging They banged it up It's all over that Yaddle booty Or maybe it takes place 50 years after Yoda dies Yeah we have no idea We don't and know it's Yoda reincarnate uh, What about uh, uh, oh, I hope but, so But see you know Stormtroopers are still there I can't s- be that far after I've been a fan of Yoda my entire life. Yeah. Um, it was actually, this was really good. Cause I, I had said something about how I liked that baby so much in a text message between you, me and dude. And I was like, I don't remember what I said. I said something about it looking like me. I was like, <laughs> I think I, I was like, I think I like it. Cause it looks so much like me. And then dude immediately responded and said, you don't look that good. Oh <laughs> uh, no! You never. You're not that. Or cute. you're not that cute. Yeah, you're not that cute. I thought that was so, like he already had so queued up. I think he was, he was texting like it for some reason. Ready. He was like ready for it. He's like you. You weren't that cute. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Yeah. Um, Anywho, uh, Werner Herzog. He was good. Werner Herzog. Which who was that? He's like that guy that gave him the bounty. Oh yeah, like the old mm-hmm. the old guy. Yeah, he's gonna have more part to play. I'm guessing. You think so? I think the ne- the rest of the show is gonna be like him on the run with this baby. I think that guy's it's gonna, gonna have be, to be. He's gonna be the big bad at least this season. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, I'm definitely in. Uh, it was. I told you. I texted you that night. I said it's everything. I never thought I needed. Yes. What did I say exactly? I'd have to look it up, but we're filming with my phone, so <laughs> I can't do that. Um. It's, it's every it's it's something I never thought I needed, but it, but it's everything, everything I, I wanted. wanted. Yeah, yeah. And that and that's the way it is. I mean, it's. I also checked out the new um, Jeff Goldblum everything. Or Jeff Goldblum. So are we just doing what we're everything. watching then? Or? I don't know, man. We're talking about Disney Plus. Oh, don't okay. try and box me in. <laughs> well, I mean, we have a specific. Don't box me, Jerry. Way about the show, and you're ruining it. Okay, fine. But whatever style. you want to do, Chris. Freestyle episode. I, I, I'm i talking about Disney Plus. The other show I watched on Disney Plus was like the life. What is it? Life According to Jeff Goldblum? Yeah. Something so, like that. It was odd. He's an odd dude. I was entertained. But the first episode's all about sneakers, and I'm just not something <laughs> that's that interesting. I don't right. like. Yeah. But it was good. I, he's so, so weird, but also like you kind of expect him to be just like weird for the sake of being weird. Mm-hmm. Like he's doing it on purpose, but then there's little moments where he's like, not like you can tell that it's is like it, legitimate. Like he's not doing it on purpose. So is this a, is this like a, it's like, like a, a reality show? No, no it's like a documentary series where is he, it just following him around? No, 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 no. He like he picks a topic like this topic was sneakers, and he like investigates all about the history of sneakers and the cultural impact of sneakers. And really. It was good. I liked it. He's funny. So, you man. liked it. Uh, Tell I, me the truth. I. It was okay. Okay. If it wasn't about sneakers and about something that I was interested in, you know, I might be more inclined to suggest it. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to mention about the Mandalorian. Every single person on the internet loved it, raved about it. Critics loved it. Yes. Fans loved it. I except would for want one, to talk about this. Except for one person. <laughs> My arch nemesis, Mark Bernardin. Mark Bernardin, blowed, blowing up Twitter about how awful it was. What is his problem? 
Um, I don't know, man. Do you think he kept saying he wanted? He said, as a storyteller, I needed more. And he kept saying also, they spent fifteen million dollars on a thirty-eight minute episode, and Lost spent ten million dollars on a two-hour premiere. Yes, and Lost was so much better. I'm like, what? What does that have to do with anything? That doesn't have anything to do. It with It has anything. nothing. First to do of with all, it. Lost was fifteen. 20 years ago? Right. The premiere? I mean, it's just so irrelevant. It, it doesn't make any sense. And he was complaining about things uh, all about story, like the way the story was being told. Like he didn't understand like, it was clearly like meant to be a West. Yes. A spaghetti he Western. He didn't get the fact that it was movie. supposed to be Western and he didn't get the fact. I think he got it. It's just he's or dumb. like he he wanted more story being told. How? At the time, I don't understand what more you could be telling about this. Like, See, I feel I like, like the, the way the they... fact that it wasn't an overarching story told, but they did throw in little things like the armor and like. Right. It's... But the reason they do that is because Mandalorians are so somewhat like secretive. Like nobody really knows about like nobody's investigated Mandalorians in in the general public as of us right now. You know what I mean? There are some people that have read books about it, but overall, the only like interaction you've had with Mandalorians have been with Jango Fett in in uh, Attack of the Clones and seeing him being cloned, and Boba Fett in Return of the Jedi and everything and before Rebels. that. If if people have watched Rebels, you know, because they talk about that's like a lot of what that show is about, but. The the major base of Star Wars fans, I guarantee you, have not seen Rebels. No, probably not. And so a lot of people are coming into this with like kind of a shaded view of what a Mandalorian is. And I feel like that's what they're portraying. Like Marley thought the Mandalorians were the little the aliens that they were riding. She said okay. that to me afterwards. She's like so the Mandalorian were those things they were riding around? And I just looked there. I'm like, you mean the things they rode around for two minutes in the episode? <laughs> you think they named the entire show after? <laughs> and she's like, I don't know. Isn't that what they're called? I'm like, I can't. I just I can't be around yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't know what I would say to that. If Amy, if Amy said that to me, I would have. I don't know what. Like they were out. In it she would have immediately got mad. I know that. <laughs> So, Marley, it took her two tries. She fell asleep the first time. So I watched it twice. Oh, my gosh. It took her two tries? Yeah, she fell asleep the first time. So she went back and watched it again the next night. So I watched it both times. Right. And it was even better the second time. It's so good. I, I like how they've kept it kind of at arm's length right now of what. Yeah. Of who he is, of what's going on. You don't You don't see him. You don't know anything about him yet. Besides the, that, he's a Mandalorian. The one thing and I will Hunter. say is that, like the beginning of that show, he they make him out to be very stoic, but then towards the end, he almost comes off as immature. So I thought that was a little odd. How so? Well, he just comes immature. off as young. I should say not immature, but like um, non-seasoned, non-experienced. Like in the beginning, he he seems like this, like. So you're saying like Boba during Fett type character, yeah? But and in the end, but he seems like a beginner. To, what, during the fight, like during the fight, just thing. in how he interacts, like his how he's talking and everything like that. Okay, so that's fine. It's yeah, a minor, yeah, absolutely. very minor thing. I just yep. don't think he likes socializing. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you know what I mean. I, he could be. He seems like he's been alone, but again, it's one episode, which is what I don't understand. How can you ask for more story right. when it's clearly it's not. A it's movie meant it's, to be that. Well, it's exactly a story it that's going to play out for six episodes, eight episodes, 10, 12, 20. Yeah, I, mean, I don't even know that we be. know that yet. I, I mean, that's the whole point of a show is to <laughs> carry on episode in episode. Right. I, it's weird. And especially since they're releasing the second episode three days later. Right. So obviously, I'm guessing they had a pilot, then they split it in half. It was too long. Probably. Um, I did love the cameo at the beginning from what's the guy. Uh, he's a com- com- uh, comic. Brian Posehn? Yeah, Brian Posehn. Writer of Deadpool, uh, Deadpool yes. by the way. Um, or previous writer of Deadpool. Uh, Brian Posehn's I love that guy. Mm-hmm. If anybody he, deserves to be in... He posted a, he's a, a he's thing like on a, Instagram. He took a selfie of himself 
watching the Mandalorian with him on the screen. And <laughs> and he's got a pretty good part. I mean, and, yeah, and he just commented on it. He's like, the biggest Star Wars nerd is canon in Star Wars now. Yeah. Who he, who played the blue alien guy at the beginning? Because I know that had to be somebody. It. I meant to look that up, and, and I, I never did. To. I. He honestly, sounded very familiar to me. I wondered if it was Patton Oswald. No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think so. I couldn't tell. But if I guarantee he'll be in this show. <coughs> I know Bill Burr's in it. We talked about that. Yeah, Bill Burr's in it, but that guy uh, is frozen in carbonite now. Carl Weathers, he's in it. Yep. Yeah, he was right off the bat. Yeah. So the one thing that I want to ask you guys your opinion about Mark Bernard. <laughs> Do you think maybe like he's just developed this shtick that he wants to purposely piss off the internet? Yes. I don't I know. Don't, I think it's just like he he's like that for everything. I think he's just like one of those nerdy it, types that's like, it wasn't, like the comic book man from Simpsons. No, 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 that's no. That's him, no. man. No, no, no. Go back. Go back to when Mark Bernardin first came onto the podcast when it was Fat Man on Batman. And they were doing, uh, they were watching movies, right? So they were doing commentary on Batman movies as they watched them. And you could sync up your movie with them. They would tell you when they're going to start it and where they're starting it at and whatever. And if you go back and listen to him talk about those movies, it is nothing like you would hear him talk about it now. He is so much more cynical and critical of all of that stuff compared to what he was then. Maybe it's because he wanted to get on a show. You know what I mean? Maybe it's because he felt like he needed to agree with Kevin more so like reviewing these movies in order to be involved with it. And now that he's like solidified going to be on the show, he can be his true self and say like, no, this is dog shit. Yeah. Or I, I don't just know. It's crazy though. It's clearly not like he's, nobody thinks that nobody, nobody thinks that. And the, the problem is, is I just have a huge problem with him saying, I'm a storyteller and this is not telling a story well enough. What? It's one episode that has been again, 38 minutes. I agree. That's too short. But like in what you're saying is that we're going to get another one on Friday. Yeah. And if it was another a, week, I did. First of all, I didn't even notice it was 30. I didn't either. I didn't either, but I, I did, thought it was 50 minutes. I thought it was too. 44. And it didn't feel short. I mean, it felt complete to me. I, I, yeah, it was a complete story. I didn't left, feel short at it in the slightest. Left it on a great cliffhanger. Yeah, like, there's. You're the one who told me it was 38 minutes, and I was like, "Holy shit!" I, I don't have it was a, like, like a lot to bitch about other than the the period when he goes to get the bounty originally, up until uh, I guess that whole thing where he gets the bounty. He goes and, and gets the money for his bounty. He gets the next bounty. He meets Werner Herzog, which I thought that was a cool scene, and then goes to the smelting thing, which I thought was a cool scene as well. But that whole period of time felt a, like a little long. Yeah, it was a little drawn out. It was a little drawn out. However, they introduced what could be a main villain mm-hmm. and the concept of the armor. Mm-hmm. So, and how important that is. To you have to do that. You it's have just, to. I'm, I'm yes. sorry. Sometimes, I mean, this is where we get back to. Um, I've said before the one show that. Uh, handles exposition better than any show I've ever seen. It isn't even my favorite show, but it is Stranger Things because you never know when they're handing you exposition. It never right. feels like no. there's never a period of that time where you feel like something is being spoon fed to you and you're kind of rolling your eyes waiting for them. It just doesn't happen in that show. Most shows do. And that had a little bit of that too. Oh, well, so does every show. Right. I mean, you got to give exposition somehow. But by the way, Blue Alien. Horatio Sands. It was? Uh, Horatio yeah. Sands. Now I need to go rewatch it again. Yeah. SNL character. I know he's lost a ton of weight. Yeah. Wow. He was good. I loved him in SNL. Yeah. I liked him. I mean, I thought he was good in that. So, uh, moving on. Yeah, we need to. So, Disney Plus happened. We love The Mandalorian, uh, all of us so far. The new episode comes out tomorrow, and we will have more critiques on that uh, later. So a little bit of news. Real quick, because we got to get in our top ten hot yeah. movies. Um, and what you're watching, because yeah. I didn't get to do it last time. 
Yeah, that's fine. I got a bunch of that too. Just re- real quick with the news, I I have one big thing that I wanted to talk about, and it is we based, should just skip the news. It's based no, around we'll just, uh, we should just, Batman. We can nope. just skip it. We can just rapid fire through. So the, the, Matt, I, I know exactly what you're going to say. Matt Reeves is making a Batman movie. We've yeah. talked about it a lot. Robert Pattinson is is Batman, right? Mm-hmm. So we know Robert Pattinson is Batman. We know the Riddler, right? We know Jeffrey Wright is going to be Commissioner Gordon. Oh, yeah. He was Love on that. Westworld. Oh. Uh, Seems really awesome. Riddler's that one dude from like those teen movies. No. So the, yeah, the guy with the nose. No, Paul Dano. Yeah, Paul Dano. He was not in teen movies. Yes, was he, he was. Yes, Paul Dano. He was in like those movies when we were kids. Okay. We were teens. My biggest thing that I remember him from was is uh, there will be blood. He always has a facial expression. If you if you're listening to this on audio, check out the video. He's always like, I know what you're talking about now. Yes. Yeah, dude, Paul but, Dano. But look, check him out, and there will be blood, and you'll think of him completely I different. I need to because I can only think of him going. In. So yeah, Paul Dano is is cast as they have it as Edward Nashton. Hmm. Okay. The Riddler. They changed his name. That's unnecessary. Yeah, I thought so too. But he's going to be the Riddler. And then uh, Zoe Kravitz has been cast as Selena Kyle. Yeah, we've said that. And then the other two biggest ones that just recently came out. Mm-hmm. Colin Farrell is going to be Oswald Cobblepot. I'm in. The I Penguin. Like it a lot. I'm in. You don't, you don't I, like that, huh? I love Colin Co- Farrell Alex? in almost anything. He's I such do a too. good actor. Colin Farrell. Tigerland. Oh, my God. That was surprises amazing. me every single time he's in a movie. I, I never enjoy the fact of like he's hearing He's the best part of the Daredevil movie, even though he goes, my peanuts. No, he's not that good. He's not <laughs> I that just good. can't. Do you remember that when he shoots the peanuts? Yes, I mean, but he's, he's not a good bullseye. He's Irish, though, there. isn't he? What's that? Yeah, he's Irish. Yeah, he is. But I, I don't know the whole. I liked. Um, he's getting Fantastic Beasts. Robin Lord Taylor's character. Paul Dano was in Swiss Army Man. He that. was, yeah. But I, I don't know. I th- I'm I'm pretty excited Robin about Lord him. Robin Lord Taylor. Oh yeah, I loved him as a penguin too. But they they played that all off as like Russian descent. Not but Irish we don't or, we don't know what the takes going to be for. Penguin yeah, it's always this. been played as Eastern European, even in uh, Batman Returns. Right, they were kind of Eastern European. Kind of, yeah. Um, yeah, whatever. He's not gonna have. Probably not gonna have an Irish accent. I mean, but they, I'll, there's I'll, more I'll casting too. There so was. So there's a there the other guy that they have just cast that really makes me excited. I really like this casting. It's Andy Circus. Oh yeah, I love as that. Alfred Pennyworth. Yeah. Ooh, so that, Andy like Circus is going to be Alfred, and that blows me away. I feel like. What makes me excited is that I feel like Alfred is going to have a bigger role than every any Alfred you've seen before. You're not going to put Andy Serkis in a role. Yeah. They're going to give, give him, him a just, ring. <laughs> yes. They're going to give him a ring and he's going to turn into a golem. A he's golem. just going to be petting Robert Pattinson asleep, calling yeah. him his precious. Yeah, and he's like, going to cough a lot. Golem. 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 My precious nasty jokers is oh man, I forgot how good that movie is. I don't know if you watch that. That's weird, but um, hopefully he makes none of those noises. I hope he makes all of them. But you haven't seen, you haven't watched Gotham, so you haven't seen. I haven't seen all of it. That guy is good, Alfred. He's a great Alfred. Has anybody watched? Oh no, I like that guy. I haven't watched Pennyworth. Pennyworth. Yeah, I'm really excited about Andy Serkis. He's a phenomenal actor. He's incredible in a mocap suit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe plays they're going to. a gonna, great monkey. Yeah, yeah, he plays a great Caesar. Yeah, maybe they're going to put him in a mocap suit He's and make Caesar. him in a digital. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> there's another one. Uh, there's a, a girl cast, Jamie Lawson, as Bella. So okay. this. I don't know who that is. Nobody really does, but the speculation is. That it's the chick from Twilight. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yes, more Twilight. Isn't her name Bella? Yeah. Yes. It was. The I ma- got that right. Yeah. There's yeah, a Bella. Yeah. There's Never a Bella it. in Twilight. But uh, the speculation is is that they're just throwing this name out, Bella, as a like a throwaway name. 
Oh. But they're saying that Jamie Lawson is actually going to be Commissioner Gordon's daughter ah. and be Batgirl. Here's my question. Who's playing Fish Mooney? <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> Jada or the chick with Jada's, the, Jada's the chick with back. the whip. What's that girl? I like that girl. Oh, um, I don't know the girl with the whip, but don't even bring that name up. That's what threw me off of Gotham. That's why I didn't want to watch it anymore. I'm here, guys. Because I I'm hated on Broadway. <laughs> I hated that the most character. overacted character. I hated Fish it Mooney. so bad. You gotta just. She yeah. was great though. You, you just gotta, gotta you tough gotta it out. Deal and with her. Eat yeah. the bad character. Yeah, How do. long is she in the show? A lot. Two, three seasons. No, but then she comes back from the dead. That, like another season. I know that. I mean, so I saw her die, and then I saw her come back. Yeah, she's probably in three. She's she's in every season. There's only five or six. She's not in all of them. She's not in the last two, but so she's in four seasons. So did you finish it yet? Actually, I haven't finished the newest season. This last one, no. Because you guys talking about the Joker. The podcast about the joke. yeah, yeah I don't yeah. want to hear about it. We didn't even bring him up. Yeah, it's not worth. But it's discussing. but see, you guys haven't seen. I it, know so it's, it's not him. It's they I get it. They go through both all the aspects of all the Joker stuff that you guys talked about. I mean, they throw with in, that person. His face is gone, and he's walking around without a face, and he staples the face back on. But but it's I not mean, the Joker. Do you guys want me to tell you about it? No, no, no. All right. I don't want you to because I will watch it. I guarantee you I'll watch it. Because they, they twist it, and then they make it but they it's... But they were legally bound to say that it's not the Joker, and I don't understand how you can... The Girl Next Door. Do that. That's that, the movie that, Paul Dano's in. That's what I was thinking, too. He was, he's the dorky... The Girl Next Door. Yeah, the you're right. Guy that's I love that movie. That's a really good what was movie. the girl's name? Because I was like had a huge <sighs> crush on her. It wasn't um, Eliza. No, it wasn't Eliza Dushku. It was... Uh, God damn, what was her name? Alicia? And the newcomers using that too. Uh, about oh, yeah. it was. Oh, let me look it up. I'm almost there. Boy, she's she's a good looking girl. You know. Yeah. I watched this movie a lot as a child. So how I do you how, <laughs> how do you guys feel about Robert Pattinson? Uh, I'm in, man. I'm, I'm in too. It, it was. Um, uh, I'm in. I'm in with Elish, that. Elisha Elisha Cuthbert. Yes, that's what I was going to tell you. Elisha Cuthbert. Emil Hirsch is the guy that's in that too. He's really good. Mm-hmm. He should be in more stuff. Have you guys ever watched the movie Twenty One with Kevin Spacey? Yeah, oh yeah, he's yeah. That's, that's a good a, movie. That's a good movie. Timothy Oliphant was in that movie. I forgot about that. Yep, he's he pimp. was. Yeah, or he the was the like, porn director. Yeah, the director or whatever. Um, Olivia Wilde was in that too. Wow, that was a big like, uh, big cast. Hmm. Of probably at the time they were relatively unknown to most of them. Yeah. Um, the girl next door talk that's been uh, <laughs> Chad. <laughs> okay, and but he was also in Lords of Dogtown. Eh? Emil Hirsch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good. And Speed Racer. Yeah, go Speed Racer. I never saw go that. Go Speed Racer. Go Speed Racer. He was go. in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood too. I need to see that. I haven't seen that yet. I need to see that too. Oh, I was gonna sing a song for you guys tonight. Okay, well we'll do that after. We'll do some. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Snarf talk. Uh, Snarfy Yoki. Snarf Yoki. All right, but mine's not really Snarfy Yoki. Okay. In a I'll, sense, it's more of a. Well, we'll get to it. Did you okay. make? But up we the have song? to do it tonight. Is it made up or? It's not made up. A man actually sang this song. His name is John LaJoy. Sure, people. Got and um, <laughs> I'm going to recite it for you later because it's good, and I sang it to my child tonight because of a certain reason. We'll talk about it later. Okay. We so, have so much to do, guys. I know. So let's do the top 10. Let's get into it. Well, I think we should do what we're watching first. Oh, you do? Okay. And wrap up with the top 10. Okay. We got to keep them short, though, guys. We can do that. Alex, what? you're up first. So what you're watching? Yes. Okay. So I know I've told you, but over the last two years, I have watched just a ridiculous amount of shows. But current stuff that's on, um, Arrow, Flash. Because it's the Flash, end, man. The end of stuff. So I haven't uh, watched this season at all, or no. last season. I'm too behind. That's... I uh, I am too. I'm I'm. Or I haven't watched any of last season Flash. Well, or it's because I've been Flash, waiting for it to come on the Netflix. They're on Netflix. They are, are they now. Yes. Okay. Well, then I can. It's like every it. October they put out the new season, right? Yep. 
I just yeah. I was waiting because I my DVR. Or no, it's as soon as the season ends, it comes out on Netflix because they made a new they had a new contract come out. Well, I always them. DVR those shows, but, but what happened is my DVR filled up and some somehow they got deleted off there, so I lost like <laughs> two shows in the interim, and then I got pissed because I didn't want to figure it out, so I just deleted all of them. So we can't talk in too much in depth. On no, that. that's fine. That's fine. Um, so there's a new show on Fox called Prodigal Son. It's probably not up your guys' alley. But Prodigal Son. So it's it's Michael Sheen from Good Omens. Love that guy. And that guy's great. And I watched Good Omens. That was a great show. Um, but he plays a serial killer who gets arrested. And then it's all about his son grown up is in. Oh, I saw the he, ad for that. He's a, he's a cop. Yeah. Or he works for the the police but isn't he a serial killer too it, it hasn't been determined yet oh, okay. but like it, right now it's all about him because he's got like ptsd why and is stuff. that not up my alley well you guys don't like horror i like stuff. dexter dexter i love dexter. dexter is top five shows for me i don't know about that because it just <laughs> fell off the it did. fucking map the last three seasons but yeah. season four terrible with john uh john lithgow is oh, awesome. so good we got and also what are you doing over there? I'm sorry. I'm looking at Netflix. <laughs> also the one uh, with, uh, what's the guy from NYC uh, PD Blues? Jimmy Smith? No, um, Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah. No, that's yeah, not who it is. It's Lou Diamond Phillips, okay. the prodigal son. That um, was, no, Jimmy Smith in Dexter. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Smith in Dexter. Yeah. yeah, that was like season two or season three. Yeah. But anyway, so I've been watching that. But then his sister was so annoying. Yeah, it's one of those things you just ignore. She's so annoying. Um, I started a show called Vikings. I've heard good things. It's actually, really, really Dude good. Dude told us about that show. Vikings, actually. like that was on the History Channel? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw the first season of that. I haven't watched it's any all, more than that. They're all on Prime. Oh, they are? Yeah. Yeah, they are. My I dad, my dad, that. my dad just started watching that. He There's so many people it. that it's watch really that show good. that love it. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really good. I would say, other than Sons of Anarchy, which is constantly like touted by every single person I know about like, that's the show you want to watch. The second most that I hear is Vikings. Yeah, I would agree. And There's so many people that have told me to I've watch. I've never watched either one of them. So sons was good. Sons. Is, gets I watched the, the first same. season and I was just kind of like, okay, I get it, it. It starts to just kind of trail off and they, they ended it. Okay. All I can think of is that when I see Charlie Hunnam is uh undeclared. I don't even know that. That's the Seth Rogen when they're in college. It's oh. a TV show that Judd Apatow did. <laughs> it was like the follow up. To, it was a sequel to Freaks and Geeks. Oh, okay. But uh, it was. I didn't yeah. even know he was oh. in that. Yeah, he was in it. He was their doormate. He was. He had. And he he kind of has. You know how he has that weird like Australian almost lispy accent. I don't know if you've heard him in a real interview. Mm-hmm. He's got like an odd voice, but it's not just an Australian accent. He's got well, he's like English. a speech impediment. No, he's Australian. Is he English? Either way. Whatever. Um, so He's really good in that Guy Ritchie uh, King Arthur movie. Yeah, I like that movie That a movie lot. rocks, man. I um, wish they would. I was so pissed at the end of that movie that they were never going to make another movie because it got so shit. It shown. bombed, yeah. yeah. So I watched The Boys, Carnival Row, Good Omens. <gasps> you can't just oh. gloss over those. That's well, so good. I mean, you, but we've you talked about all of them. Right, yeah. that's why I'm just going quick. But Carnival Row, how about it, man? It, it's It's weird. But it's up my alley. I'm into the. Isn't theme. it so okay. good? I, I like it's the funny fantasy that, that genre. Out of those three, what was the third one you said? The mm. Boys, Carnival Row. What was the other one? Good Omens, I think. Okay, I uh, three of those are like honestly, they gotta be on the top of the list of some of the best shows ever made. But of all, you said all those three in a row, and the first one I keyed in was Carnival Row. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, yeah, I love that show. But I, I mean, Good o- Good Omens was so great, and especially because the cast. Know? Dude, it's almost imp- he's not here. You're killing me, dude. <laughs> Be present in the conversation. I am Jerry. very. Uh, Keep no. going. Good Omens was so good. I loved it. Um, David Tennant and Michael mm-hmm. Sheen, but um, Carnival Row, man, that just it was amazing. Something about it just grabbed me. And the, the biggest boys thing I really like, liked, but I was more critical of the boys than you were. Really. I loved the boys. I and thought I it can't... was good. It was a good watch. It's but... guaranteed for a second season now. It didn't um, suck me in as much as I think they came out with a teaser for that you know what's already guaranteed yeah. for a second season even though it hasn't come out yet the witcher yes i saw that i saw it was it's guaranteed gonna be for really that really good you think so yeah, it's gonna be really good have you played the game 
I have. It's basically a movie. I mean, that is a <coughs> good, good, good show. I don't think so. I don't like the casting of uh, What's His Nuts as Geralt. Uh, uh, who is the casting? I don't even know. What? How is not the, the the Superman who played Superman? Oh, it's Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Great man. Mm, I don't think he looks right. Okay. Anyway, go on. Um, have either of you watched Altered Carbon or Frontier? I started Altered Carbon. I did too. I started watching Altered Car- Carbon at the I recommendation of my friend Vic, uh, who listens to the podcast. I hope. Um, uh, I liked it a lot. Pagoda watched Altered Carbon and told me to watch it, and I watched. I don't think I finished it. I watched 90% I, of it, and I I enjoyed it a lot, but I never did finish the it. The problem I had with it is uh, me and Marley were watching it together, and it was one of those shows mm-hmm. no, that I know what you mean. she wanted to watch, but she only ever watches one episode, and then she could never, she'll never watch another one. But she won't let me watch one. I did not I watch. We were watching that Kind of like Jack Ryan, which I'm trying to watch right now. I um, still haven't started the I second have, season of Jack either. Ryan because either. Amy has I went to bed I watched the first episode so early. and hit it rocked, I didn't watch the first it's episode. So good. So anyway, Frontier, I have not seen. Uh, Amy started Frontier the other day. I've never watched it because it was widely pandered as not good. I actually enjoy it because I immediately. I think this is a downfall of mine. I was searching like if it was any good. Basically, like oh, I was I looking I for that. reviews. I looked at reviews on it and. A lot of people didn't care for it, but I think it looks awesome. Yeah. I just, what's it on? Netflix. Netflix. I just never for, heard of it. Oh, is that the one with uh, Jason Momoa? Momoa. It's, it's been about, on there for a long time. About, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. in the third or fourth I watched season. the couple, first couple episodes of that. I, it was not good. I don't know. I, I like it, but see, I don't, I, Chris is like the Mark Bernard of this see, show. Me, I just want to be able to, I want to turn my brain off yeah. and just, Sit there, and plus we're that's why I yeah, watch Jeopardy. One. I need another uh, fist miss. Fist miss. Fist miss. So, like, I don't know. Working swing shift. I need something to watch because like, summertime there's not new shows on. Yeah, yeah, no. So I just yeah. that's the problem start now. Is, rolling uh, into something. There's so many shows on now. It's hard to keep up. Um, so. And the last thing okay. is Supernatural, and if you guys haven't watched, I've never Super- watched. Super- <sighs> Here's guys, the deal: I don't even. Want to we we don't. Okay, I'm leaving. We're gonna do a whole episode on Supernatural because I know how big of a fan you are. I've watched it twice. Yeah, you, uh, and, la- last and year it's I like what through, twenty seasons. Uh, this is the fifteenth and final season. Last 15th year, season. is it the fifteenth? I, I watched like a long. Run, I right. watched all thirteen seasons and stayed current with the fourteenth season in like. Three and a months. bunch of them are like 22 episode seasons, right? They're all like maybe like two or there was a writer's strike or something. But yeah, they're all 22 episodes. Crazy. Wow. They're, they're hour long episodes. There's like 400 episodes. I watch a lot of shows. Holy crap. The, that's that's impressive. I mean, that show's been around a long time. Obviously, 15 seasons. Think about it. That show came on like the same time as Smallville. Yeah. And Smallville ran like 10 seasons. And it's still going. <laughs> Supernatural is still going. In my opinion, the way it is, it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets like the Hardy Boys. Yeah. Hmm. I've Basically. watched some of it. I mean, but a long time ago. Right. Like when and it was first on. Trust me, they're not all good. And, and seasons kind of. Things don't have to be good to be good. Like I remember one of my favorite shows of all time is Farscape. And it was like that. a it was a Jim Henson produced show from like the nineties. Oh yes, I do and remember. It was that. all in space with puppets. You you've it's talked about such that multiple a times. Good show, it's so good. Everybody should watch it. But it is like not good, good. Right. No, but I know what you mean. The writing is really good. Like I don't know. Like every show doesn't have to be perfect. No. What What have you watched? Uh, I, you got any others? No, that I'm, I'm done. I've watched, uh, I'll, and I'll skim through it because mine are shows that I'm just starting. Yeah, mine's uh, very quick. His Dark Materials, I started on HBO. You did, yeah. And uh, I did see. Uh, I saw the movie Golden Compass. I've never read the books. I the um, movie. I like the movie I Golden. Think the Compass. movie was fine, but I didn't really remember it. Um, the show I'm really enjoying. Okay, um, I need to watch that. I, that there, that intrigued me. There's been two episodes. The production value is really good. Um, the acting is really good. Um, f- what's the guy um, from Split? 
James McAvoy. James McAvoy. Oh yeah, he's so good. He's a very good actor. Which we haven't talked about. I watched Glass. That's oh, how, you did. I'm gonna put it on my list. Um, anyway, I watched His Dark Materials, but there's only two episodes. I won't go into in depth because we'll wait till like the se- se- season's yeah, over. Yeah, but it's so. definitely something to watch. Okay, because um, th- th- I was looking into that. I never did watch it. I yet, always but. was intrigued by that because, like, I personally like I'm not a religious person, and like that was billed as like the anti Chronicles of Narnia. Right. Which was a very religious book series. Yeah. This was like considered like the, you know, opposite of that. And so it's always uh, been of interest to me, but I think it was a little, it was either a little, I don't know when the books came out. I might've been a a little young. I'm not sure. Um, They came out in the nineties, but anyway. Um, So that's really good. Uh, I've been watching Watchmen a lot. I haven't watched any of it yet. So, uh, well, I mean, besides the first, the first two episodes, episodes, two, first two. So there's been only one more, I think, since then. I think there's three. Okay. Or no, there's four. Um, the third episode is freaking awesome. Okay. Um, the the first one was bad. The second one was better. The third one's great. The fourth one, um, I have not finished. I fell asleep twice. Oh. But. The third one is so good that it makes me interested. And the fourth one, the title of it is, um, I need to find the title. It's basically like something along the lines of, if you don't like my story, write your own, is the name of the title. Really? Of the episode. So like, it's almost like he knew, Damon Lindelof right. knew that he was going to catch shit for the show oh my and wrote it into the title of the show. No it's kidding. interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the third episode um, is really when I think it takes a turn to the interesting. Don't um, get too deep into it. Okay. I'm just saying I they bring seen back it. a lot of the old original Watchmen Good. characters. Um, and is they, it a flashback episode? No. No. They okay. bring back those characters legitimately into the fold. And they wow. do a lot more with Ozymandias, um, with Good. Jeremy Irons' character. Yep. yep. And that's really interesting. I freaking love Jeremy Irons. And... Um, I think what you kind of come to realize is that where they start off this show in the first and second episode kind of with um, uh, it's becoming the backdrop for a larger thing. Yeah, it's got to be a bigger thing. It is. And uh, it's like enormous thing because that's that's what I've always thought that there are things going on that they haven't explained yet. Uh, there are there's a lot to not like here. I'm just going to say that out. Yeah, front. but like. Damon Lindelof, like he's he, he's a good writer. Yeah, he is. Like there's a lot of interesting threads, and That's... there is this one scene in the third episode where this big main character um, comes back. Um, she's an FBI agent, and she approaches uh, Regina King's character. Yeah, um, and she basically like threatens her significantly. She's like, "I know," and it's about the chief, right? Yeah, she's like. I know that you were close with them and you know more than what's going on, what you're saying. And she basically like threatens the shit out of her in this really like ominous scene. And at the end, the Regina King character, she just goes, Ooh. and then she just, <laughs> cause she hand, but the first thing she does when she walks in the, the FBI agent, she gives her a cup of coffee and like tries to act all friendly, but then gets in this really ominous menacing tone to her. And she just goes, Ooh. And then just dumps the coffee out. It's <laughs> oh one of the best scenes gosh. of anything I've ever seen. No kidding. Like she does it. I don't know if I it came across the way I did it, but in a way like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, no, you the can't. way you did it came across as stroke. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought she had a stroke in the middle of I'm the gonna episode. I'm going to say. It, it which gets, would be still incredible. This other character is so good and it's so ominous and the music and the tone is so striking that you're like sucked all in. And then when she does that move, to just like throw it in the girl's face. You're just like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's good. That's a good one. And that's a good episode. And there's some interesting stuff going on. The, the next one hasn't been as good, but I haven't finished it. Um, the other thing I watched, I'm watching Silicon Valley. Yes. Love that show. I just love that show. I'm caught up on that it's now. Very funny. So I watched, we had talked about on a previous episode uh, that I needed to watch like all of last season. Yeah, prior to the but one very that came quick out to watch. So I watched all of that, and then I've 
caught up on the season thus far. It is so good. Yeah. I mean, too short. Though. So it is too short. And to be fair, the every season is the same. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing every every That's year. That's fine because the actors are so good. The Tom actors are so Middleditch, good. Thomas Middleditch and Kamal Nanjiani and uh, Martin Star. Martin Star. Martin and Star the girl, is the, I, can't, I don't know her name. I don't know her name either, They're but she's so good. good. And the and the two guys that advise Gavin Belson, yes, are so very good. good. Uh, all of them are their like very the incredible characters. It's good. Oh my gosh, you need to watch. Do you have Silicon HBO Valley? Valley. Yeah. And you've never watched Silicon Valley <laughs> or Watchmen. So my problem with Watchmen, where is have you been? I did not like the movie. What? I I. This is nothing like the movie. First off, it's completely no, it's completely separate. Throw it out; it's a whole different story. I couldn't. Well, figure it's out actually what the fuck after was going on in that movie. Yeah, and I've watched it three times, and every time it's like I don't read know the book. What's going on? I don't read. I've had a book. <laughs> I can't I've had a, read. It's a comic book. <laughs> Did you just listen to the list of stuff that I've watched? I yeah. can't read, Chris. I, I I've had a one book for like the last three years that I've tried restarting six times. Because what, what book? Uh, it's um, the dictionary. No, it's City of Mirrors. It's based on it, well, they made a TV show called The Passage on Fox. This is your problem. It's already uninteresting. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, <laughs> the, it's the third. It's the third book in the series. Okay. So I've tried. Just read The Da Vinci Code or something. Yeah, Dan Brown, man. It's great. Oh, that, so good. A movie. I'll watch that. Angels and Demons. Angels and Demons. Again, is good. Good book. Yeah. I want to shut my brain off. I just want to just. Mm. Yeah, I get you. I I get it too. I I didn't get it until I started working day shifts. Yeah, what's um, that? But yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so going on. Um, I watched uh, the Jeff, Jeff Goldblum thing I mentioned. That's it. I mean, really. Um, the X Men cartoons I've been watching. Stump Town. I'm really enjoying. That's, that's what I, I need to watch. That. It's really good. It's fun. I haven't it's, watched that's any a, of that. A shut down your brain, and just fun like thriller good it's good and uh with humor it's a good show yeah so that's the problem with Watchmen. it's so heavy it's so heavy that it's like i find myself like i see that it's on i'm like i don't want that's too heavy yeah like i don't want to watch a show where i gotta try to figure out what's going on mm-hmm. i just want it to tell me yeah I don't want to you know, try man, to, man, I don't want to try to grab there, There's nothing that you and... have any idea what's going on in The Watchmen. <laughs> yeah. It is so crazy. It's just not making any sense. But I'm enjoying it a lot. So I only have two two shows that I've really been watching um, a lot in the last week. Um, everything else that I, I have watched more, but we've basically covered it. Like you guys have talked about a lot of them. Um, but the only two that I've watched probably aren't on the spectrum of most people that they watch. One of them was World War II, uh, World War II Moments in Color, something like that. It's on Netflix. It's a new documentary that came out, and it basically just goes over each like significant part of the war that was like turning points. I don't know how many episodes it is. I've made it through five. Um, they're each about 50 minutes long, and they're all in color, you know. I'm super interested in that. I think it's incredible. And learning new things about like history to me is amazing. And uh, they go over like, there's one part that I watched last night. It was like episode four that they were talking about Midway uh, and like the fight that happened at Midway Island. And I had at Midway, no at Midway airport. Yeah. Well, Midway <laughs> airport. It's named is after named it. after that I know. that battle, and that's why they have a bunch of planes hanging. You know, in the my airport. favorite thing about Midway Airport. It's super easy to get in and out of. Well, yes. it's a great airport, but um, they've changed it now, and they've ruined the entire airport. I but don't agree. It used to be when you went to Midway Airport, every time you got off the plane or on, there was a guy over the announcement speaker, the PA speaker. Yeah, and he'd go, "Welcome to Chicago's Midway Airports. Any unattended baggage will be kept by the Chicago PD." <laughs> No way. I swear to God, for years, it was that voice, and that was the voice of the guy on the announcements. And the last was time I went Norm? there... That was really good. Was it Norm from Cheers doing that? I'm telling or? you, it's that was the voice. And then a year ago, I went back there, last year when we went on vacation, 
And they've changed it now. It's not that guy. It's a sultry voice now. Oh, my God. Welcome, Welcome to Chicago Midway Airports. <laughs> Airports. Any unattended baggage da, will coach. be taken by the <laughs> Chicago yeah. Police Department. That's how many heart attacks I make for you. That's a baker's dozen for me, Phil. So. <laughs> um, uh, World War II and Keller, what else? Yes. Yeah, so, anyway, I just thought it. I think it's very interesting. It, I've learned a lot of new things about world war two. The reason it sparked me into watching it is because Amy was asking me questions about world war two that I was answering for. Her. And then I was like, man, and then I just happened to stumble upon it. I was like, man, I need to learn more about this so I can answer these questions more accurately. And that's what I did. Next one was, um, I can't, I didn't write it. All of this is written down on my phone. But it's a space show, but it's about it's like it's a documentary again about Mark Kelly, who stayed in space for a year. And I think it's called The Martian. Uh, no, I, th- <laughs> I think it's called like uh, it's like the man in space or something or in space for a year, something like that. You'll find it. It's like right in the beginning of Netflix. You'll see it in there. If you just type in the word space, I guarantee you it'll come up. But it's documenting this guy's uh, like getting ready for space travel. It talks about like space flights, like space walks, all these different things. But he stays in in orbit for one year, and uh, it's just talking. It just shows that like him getting ready for it, him up in like in space, everything he's doing, the the job that he was supposed to do to begin with. It goes on space walks with them and it gives video footage, you know, of the space walks. And I think that stuff is incredible. Yeah, that's cool. Like it is wild to see there was an outer actual, space and uh, it terrifies me. A documentary that I watched too that I forgot about that was on Disney Plus. Um Free Solo. I've wa- I haven't watched, I watched, that watched that it yet. Last night. So Alec Holland is a guy that no, I follow. Alec for. Holland is from Swamp Thing. Alex. Holland. Alex, oh, it, no, it's not Holland. It's yes, like, it is. No, Calm. it's not. It's Alex uh, holds. Honold. Honold. Alex Honold. Yeah. Alex Honold. He um, is interesting cat, man. He's interesting, and he's he's clearly un- got like some form of, I want to say autism. But yeah, like, broad uh, spectrum issue. Aspergers, maybe. Super interesting dude. Though. But. He, what he has done is one of the greatest feats in it's any athletic, like human achievement. Yes. Any human achievement you can think of that man has done something. Nobody in our lifetime will ever do again. I don't think Watch so. Watch this documentary. There's a point in it, which they start talking about free solo climbers. And then they just start showing the pictures of everybody that's ever done it. And every single one dead. of them has died. All of them. They're all dead because the problem for this guy, the problem with free soloing is that all of these people push it like continuously do it. And like uh, in a lot of interviews that uh, Alex Honnold has had, he says like he has no adrenaline spikes or anything unless something goes wrong. They did something in his brain. They did a CT scan of his brain like he doesn't. There's something wrong with his amygdala, which is the fear Center of your that brain. makes sense because he said the only time he has any sort of anxiety or fear while he's doing it is if something has went completely when wrong. He's half a mile up on a sheer faced cliff with no ropes, no ropes, no parachute. He nothing. He's on Joe Rogan. It's he go, insane. He, he goes on Joe Rogan. The first time I ever saw him was on Joe Rogan, and that's what's that got me into him. And it was before this documentary ever came out. And just on Tuesday, when I was looking through all of the Disney Plus shows, I saw Free Solo was on there. I can't. Yeah. And I was like yelling at Amy. I was like, Free Solo. I've got to watch this. i yeah. got to see this. Finally, it was like a year ago that I heard about this guy. I can't recommend it enough. It's so good. And, and it goes in depth into his personality, too. He lives in a van. Yeah. he He's so, making so much money off living? of advertisements. <laughs> yeah. But he lives in a van on his own. And he's and got all the, he does is climb. A lot of the shows too rocks. about like he's got this girlfriend, um, that doesn't agree with him. No, she's cool, man, and she's very good looking. She's very supportive. 
but like she's a beginning climber. She wasn't really a climber before she met him, but she's climbing now. And like he's like twice since I've met her, I've fallen. Like the first time he fractured um, his vertebra or something in the fall. And the next thing he says is like, uh, so that I was just going to break up with her. And then Unbelievable. He, she's, he, he's like, uh, but she convinced me not to. And then like they were climbing like a month later and he fell and like broke his foot. And he's just like, well, it's over now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he like doesn't care about human beings. Like just. He climbing. doesn't care about anything except for climbing. But anyway, um, they do continue their relationship. It's just a very interesting look inside of his life as a person. Yeah. And then also like it's breathtaking the shots. It's a National Geographic. Yeah, the shots um, that they got. Well, I saw a behind the scenes thing like a making of Free Solo. They have it on YouTube actually. You can watch it on YouTube. But there's a making of Free Solo. I watched that a long time ago, and it's just about the people like the people that filmed it are his friends. Yeah, they're mountain he knows, climbers. Yeah, he knows them really well. But they've been he, they're professional he chose those people to film him climbing uh yosemite because el capitan uh in yosemite, in yosemite national yeah. park yeah el capitan um he chose those people because he knew them really well he knew that they could climb really well he knew that they were going to do the job but they had all said like we're filming this we have to prepare ourselves for the moment that he falls and just dies it's done they're like we the the, the whole thing he's that we had to this rock for. face with ropes. So this is these are regularly climbed mountains, very advanced, but people climb them with ropes, um, and he climbs them with ropes several times. He's mm-hmm. he said he's done it like a hundred times with ropes, and he planned he out a course. Continually falls with the ropes on, trying to do this course, and then like at one point he just does it, and mind you, he does it in like. A flannel button down shirt and yeah. like shorts and like regular. Sh- I mean, he's got no special gear. But at one I'm point, good. at one point during this climb, there's a section where he has to jump he, from one rock. Yeah, but he did, I don't think he did that route. There was two routes, right? No, he did. A, In I the, thought he did it. He did it with ropes and he kept missing. He, would, still, he, he said he would only get like one out of five times. But regardless, I think there's a point where you have to do some sort of leaving the rock face and grabbing onto another. There's a point where there's an, two options. One is jumping and grabbing a handhold. Yes. And the other is doing a karate kick is what he calls it, where you basically kick your foot out and like lean your body forward and it hits the next rock. And then you have to grab something. And then from you there. have to figure out where to go from there. It's unbelievable to see what he's grabbing onto. We're talking about um, fingertip, finger like he's using his nail and a, his fingertip. A quarter inch, he is grabbing on. That's his handholds. And you've got to look at his this guy's hands. His hands are, they look so crippled and like they're really thick. His fingers are really yeah. thick. His hands are big, but they look like almost he looks like crippled. Andy Circus. He does in nice. a mocap suit. <laughs> Father. <laughs> all right we have to move either. on this might do be we, over to our episode or we could just split it into two do we, got time? we could too um it's we're at one hour and 34 minutes so we could just do like release two episodes in a week no we can't all right it's gonna be a long one guys because we're getting into our top 10 top 10 holiday movies ever produced in the world now i know most people are like tuning in Ever. just for this and then they've just sat through an hour and a half <laughs> yes complete, <laughs> complete you, can't, you, can't really, you can't really break it up at this point because we started the episode saying hey we're gonna do this <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> that is true yeah. um we're gonna do our top 10 holiday movies this is gonna be a, a big one it's gonna bring in all the fans I'm people got, love holiday hey movies. what are you guys thankful for <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for everything. And now it's before Thanksgiving, for sure. but we're this episode's coming out here, after Thanksgiving. Here is my question, Chris. Correct. There are multiple movies that have been released prior to the holidays, but are set in holiday times. I, In my opinion, your list has to be 
like movies so, that are about the Christmas. So they have to be about Christmas. The or theme of the movie has to be no, no. We Why said can't holidays. They? I when I, when we said this, I was envisioning that it was Christmas. Envisioning Hanukkah, doesn't count. Kwanzaa, one of those three. What about Halloween? No, it's Halloween's Christmas. A, Halloween. It's, Fourth of July is a holiday. These are Christmas movies. That's what we're doing. The holiday holiday season is Thanksgiving, Christmas. We're doing Christmas movies. Okay. It's right before Christmas. What about movies? That's what people want to hear. They don't want to hear about Halloween movies. You're right. I do. Here's my question. What about movies that are set during Christmas time but have been released earlier in the year? As long as the point of the movie has something to do with Christmas. Or Kwanzaa or well, I've got Hanukkah. two movies you're going to argue that I feel like are they aren't necessarily about, you know, old Saint Nick, but they're set during Christmas and they're they have to be about like something about the movie has to be about. Let's just. OK, then I have Christmas. one. So one out of the three. OK, I have is basically about Christmas because it it ruins Christmas. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um and then you also had questions about what can, constitutes a movie. Right? Oh, yeah, like um Does it have to be theatrical release or Yeah, okay, do like made for TV movies count? Made for TV movies um like like The Grinch or P- The Peanuts. In my I, or Rankin and Bass. Rankin and Bass, no. <laughs> <laughs> Franklin and Bash, yes. That's got they're, they're two lawyers. That has nothing to do. With... I bet you there's a Christmas episode. There's got to be. Well, um, okay, but that's just one episode. Here's my thing. Okay, a movie, yes. So the Grinch is a movie. The Peanuts is a movie. The Rankin and Bass, Bass. I think it's Bass. Those are Bash. shorts. Those are like shorts. Okay. They're episodes, right? They're not on my list, so I just. If you want to put them all together as one movie, that's fine with me. I love how. What is it like? Rudolph. There's Rudolph. There's uh, You're Frosty. A Santa Claus. There, I don't know. Whichever one's got the heat miser and so Mother Nature. What's your number ten, Chris? <laughs> Are we going? Okay, number ten on my <laughs> list of the best um, holiday. By holiday, I mean Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa. Yeah, movies is uh, Jingle All the Way. Uh, you put it on there, huh? I put it on there. Like, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. I I looked at that a lot. And I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Well, partake. I want to preface my list before I get too much more in depth. In. <laughs> okay. I am not a Christmas guy. Me either. I'm not a. No, I take that back. I'm not a of. huge uh, holiday spirit kind of guy. I'm not into the music. I'm not into the decorations. I. I'm not into the movies. Okay. You're not into the decorations so, or anything. Nah, I'm not. It's not my thing, man. Quick question: Did, Have either of you worked retail? Ever. No. Uh, See, no. I worked at Value City, and Christmas music comes out like October 25th. <laughs> like two months ago. Till January 15th. The music, I understand. And like, I, I completely understand people not wanting to hear that music for four months of the year. Oh, God. My thing is, I'm not a big fan of even Christmas movies, but I had to put a list of my top ten. And again, these are our top tens, not the best of all time. Correct. So my yes. number 10 is Jingle All the Way. I think it's a fun movie. I like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I like the fact that they're like, he's right chasing down a toy, right? That's mm-hmm. the main concept of that movie. I feel like Jerry needs a fist mist. Yeah, I do. Yeah, we're talking about Christ mist. Let's <laughs> talk about fist mist. Yeah, I I'll do. Take another no, one I agree. While you're at it, fist mist this beer. You can give me whatever you want. I Alex brought all the in. drinks tonight. That was his uh, contribution. Yes. Thank you, Alex. The Snarf Talk yeah. community. Um, my number 10 jingle all the way. Uh, Alex, your number 10. Your number 10. My number 10, which we're going to argue about right away because it might not meet Chris's stipulations, uh, is uh, Gremlins. So Start, that was my it, argument. It starts off on Christmas Eve. And if you want to argue that with me. So the whole idea of the movie is that the Gremlins ruin Christmas Eve. They ruin Christmas because they come out. They like party during Christmas Eve, and then Christmas doesn't happen right because of them. It counts. Yes, yes, count it, it. yes it does count. I didn't put it on my list because I didn't think of it. But so, 
I of course you counter. didn't because I, you don't have the brain. Here's my thing. Like a lot of people argue that uh, that the Harry Potter, one of the Harry Potter movies is a Christmas movie because like at a period of time in the movie, he's at Hogwarts during the Christmas, Christmas season, season yeah. and they wear Christmas sweaters and they got trees and everything. Right. And uh, uh, I love that movie, but it's not a Christmas movie. Which Just movie? Just because Christmas happens during the movie. One of the Harry Potters. Oh. Doesn't make it a Christmas movie. Like... Every other holiday happens during that movie too. Well, right, so and I it's guess also it... not like that one singular Harry Potter is going to be on TNT between December first and December twenty right. fifth. It's there's Gremlins though, but go ahead. Gremlins will be on something. <laughs> yeah, between the they're 23rd making a Gremlins, and... new Gremlins animated, right on uh, HBO. Uh, animated series. I, I like the old school. I want to see a Furby thing. Yeah, I love Gremlins, but I never even really, honestly, I don't remember it being a Christmas movie, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's set uh, on Christmas Eve, and that's what I had as my number 10, is and Gremlins. That's your number 10, too? Yeah, uh, that's that's why oh. I, what I've been arguing about is that one of these movies, that one of the three that I had, is set on Christmas Eve. So I'm going to be honest with you. I made a separate list, which we'll talk about at the end, that was... Movies that happen in and around Christmas. Yes. But it's not central to their plot. Okay. Yes. So I have two other movies besides that one, but yes, I've so got two other movies like honorable mentions. I have we'll three call others. It. But my number 10 was also Gremlins. But the the main plot of this movie is that, yes, you don't want to get them wet or feed them after midnight. Which it's always after midnight. At it all is, points of the day, it's it is after, after midnight. midnight. This is drives me crazy. I know. I've always said that too. My brother and I have been in lengthy conversations about this. So what's his either, argument? Either way, I don't remember. I'd have to get in an argument after with him midnight again. before six a.m. I guess I don't know. I think noon. I think twelve noon is the cutoff. Speaking of time, did you know that Illinois just just quit daylight savings? Time? No, they haven't yet. It went to the House. So Senate. Senate. No, it passed the no, Senate. It passed. As far as I know, it's passed both. It's on it the governor's federal, desk. It needs uh, federal. Oh, approval. I didn't know that. No, it doesn't. It just needs to be signed by the governor. Done. I mean, good. That's how Indiana is. So we're gonna smoke pot, and we're gonna not. But fucking s- go to bed. So at wait a minute. So wait a minute. Like, we're are spring, we gonna change the clocks back yes. then? We'll, no, we will, we will spring forward. Yes, in March. And that'll be the end. Okay, and that'll okay. be the end of it. It's okay. over after that. Good. Anyway, so, and then it'll be even more confusing about what's after midnight. Right. Daylight yes. savings time. How does that play into anyway, the Gremlins universe? I don't know, but my number 10 was Gremlins. Your number nine, Christopher. My number nine is uh, Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. Hmm. It's a good one. It's a good one to watch with your kids. I feel the same way you do. Do you know Jerry. this one? I don't think I do. It's a series of little shorts. Um and one of them is Goofy and Max celebrating Christmas. That's really good. But Max doesn't want to celebrate Christmas. He with doesn't want to celebrate. He wants to go with his girlfriend. He wants to go with his girlfriend, and then he finds out that he that girls aren't all that that's his wrapped dad's up amazing, and he's missing out. I'm, they do the Prince and the Pauper mm-hmm. uh, with Mickey and Minnie. It's very good. And they do another little short. It's a great fun one. Gets in the Christmas spirit. Watch it with your kids. It's uh, very easy when I watch. I'm good pretty one. sure okay. my kids watch that in like September. Yeah, my it's kids on, watch it. It's on here. Netflix. There or is something. also Twice Upon a Christmas, but it's not as good as Once Upon a Christmas. It's a good one. You yeah, that's definitely sounds check good. it out. Doesn't I guess sound I like should. you've seen it. No, I haven't. The Goofy and Max one is heartfelt. Yeah, that that is. It'll I, choke a tear out. Yeah, of you. it does. It'll I literally you, choke you till you. I tear usually up. tear up on that one. I'm not okay, gonna lie. it's good. It's a good. Says movie. the guy who just said he doesn't like. The Christmas spirit. I like, well, I like. I like. Can kind of get stuff. you in the Christmas spirit, though. And that little Prince and the Popper is a great story. Okay, it's a good one. Alex, you're number Alex nine. Alex P. Keaton, you're up number nine. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, because I think that that movie was a first of its kind. It's definitely a Christmas movie. I, it it's it not, is not the one that I've ever had any in, interest in. Really? What is your problem? I just. I never watched it, first of all, until like a year ago. Something and wrong with you. I watched it with my kids, and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get why people are so into this. Really? People are obsessed with it. Go to Disney World. 
And it's, it's like the number one thing. Amy and I wearing. dressed as Jack Skellington. And you would do that. We did. I dressed as Jack Skellington and Amy dressed as the chick. What was her name? The Corpse Bride? No, that's a different I mean, that's, movie. It's but basically it's the same, the same character, chick. right? Yeah, it's yeah. the same girl. Uh, I, don't I don't remember, remember but... She dressed as her. It was really good. We won the we won a costume contest. So I don't honestly. This was back in aught nine, with David Timmons. He was there. He's a Patreon subscriber. He is. Um, why do you like it so much? I just I did, I don't know. I did. We'll talk about it later. I okay. Like I said, it to me it was the first type of that style of animation and very. I mean Tim uh, Burton. Just Tim Burton. Yeah, Tim Burton. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Was Coraline before that? After. Yeah. After. Well, after. well after. Okay. Because that. I, yeah. I like Coraline. Coraline's great, but Nightmare Before Christmas came out like early '90s. Okay. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man. Okay. Number nine, Jerry. My number nine is this might be pandered, but it's the uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, like the Jim Carrey version. The Jim Carrey version. <gasps> yeah, I love it. <gasps> Um, you know, I, I do. I enjoy it. I like Jim Carrey's version of it. I like it's fine. Cindy, I don't like it as much as the animated version. I like the Cindy Lou Who character, and she became a lead singer of a metal band that I what? enjoy. Yeah. What? What band? I'll have Evanescence. To look it up. Tell me it's Evanescence. No, it's if not it's not Evanescence, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Anymore. It is not. It's tell, not Evanescence. I, I recently stood on a fucking pedestal the other day and said, "I'm making it known." Evanescence, that one song, bring, they, bring me to life, is my favorite song of all time. Is that the one it's, song you're talking she's about? She's really good, Amy Lee. Um, so the band's called. Oh, we're getting we're getting deep into Snarfy Oki tonight, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> that song. Uh, the pretty reckless, the pretty reckless. Really? Yeah. She's the lead singer. Cindy Lou Who. Um, he, I, I listened to uh, twice now in the last month, randomly. Uh, Rod, uh, Rob Baker was on Joe Rogan. And I also heard him on another. He's like yes. the makeup artist. He, he was did all on Star a, Wars. He did all the American Batman Werewolf Beyond. in Paris. He was on Batman Beyond. Yeah. Yeah. He did uh, that suit. Jim Carrey's um, outfit. He did? Yeah, he did it. And um, it's so good. The studio hired him. They didn't want to do that at all. And he basically threw a shit fit. And he's like, he made up that suit. He's like, it ain't going to work unless it looks like this. They had some dumb shit idea. The studio. I don't doubt that they did. Um, I don't have a problem with that movie. It's fine. I, I like I, the animated version better, personally. I like the movie. I think it's really good. Have you seen good. the new one? Has anybody seen the new one? I have not. I have uh, the not. boys, I mean, my boys have watched it. I have not been in the room while they were watching it. I think that's going to be, I, I haven't watched it. I think uh, my kids haven't watched it. But it'll I, be a I big may, one for us this year. I may have seen like I've heard it's great. two minutes of it. And it's our buddy Scott Mosier, right? It is my buddy Scott Mosier. All right, so we're on to my number eight. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. My number eight is The Santa Claus. I love that movie. With, with, an, e, with an E? Yes. The Santa Claus. Um, I mean, that was like in the heyday of Tim Allen. I watched that movie so <laughs> many times, Chris. Yeah. Back to, back to the sitcom. It's episode. so good. Yeah. There's a huge heartfelt part of that Very movie heartfelt. with the kid and the I mean, it's divorce. No jungle to jungle, but oh, that was a great movie. Stop too. it. We're talking about Christmas stuff. Was that Paul Dano? Oh, there's only one left. Um. Um. No, but I like the Santa Claus, and I think it's a great Christmas movie. It really is. It is. Phenomenal Christmas movie. I love it. We will talk about it again. Okay. Number eight, Alex. It is a movie that the wife and I watched for the first time two years ago called The Ref. The Ref. Has that got Kevin Hart in it? I don't know. No. Dennis Leary. Okay. Like, nobody I, likes I Dennis, love Dennis Leary. Leary. When Dennis Rescue Leary... Me is one of my favorite All right, shows. So it's, it's it is Dennis Leary and Dennis... So do you want me to give you the premise? Yeah. Demis, De- Demis. Dennis Leary is a burglar, and he's going into houses on Christmas Eve. A turd burglar? No. Like is a, he burgle like turds? A, like a jewel burglar. Turd burglar. Did you know that that's the verb, burgle? Yeah. 
to oh, bur- I'll to bur- burgle the shit out of you. <laughs> to, to burgle. <laughs> so I'm going to burgle this so house down. He he breaks into a house, <laughs> steals a bunch of stuff. And becomes jewels. a referee? And he, no. So yeah. he gets, he's on the run, and he basically carjacks this couple. And it's Kevin Spacey, and I forget, who, Judy Davis. <sighs> Can't watch that movie anymore. Betty Kevin Davis? Spacey. Okay, but no, Judy Davis. <laughs> Kevin Spacey's bad news now. Uh, whatever. He's a good actor. Hashtag though. me too. All right. <laughs> He's Hashtag a good actor. Me too. Underage boys. <laughs> Right. Is it backslash. That's a different hashtag. Hashtag I'm me too boy. backslash underage boys. Um, That's like so, a Brian Singer thing. But mm. the, little does he know that this couple is going through like partial is divorce. Is it Brian Singer or Brent Ratner? Brian Singer. Let him finish. Okay. It's going through a divorce. I was listening. I didn't want to badly call out Brian Singer if it why was. Do you, a why do you, Thanks, Mom. Why do you care? Let the guy talk. Okay. Um,. So their couple's arguing and they're about ready to divorce. So they're constantly fighting. Well, he has to play the ref mm. and get them to quit squabbling and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. It's it's good watch. Okay, it's, it's funny. I'll have to look it I'll up. Check it out. My number eight, Polar Express. Oh, that is the worst fucking movie. It's not. It's very it's good. Terrible. It's not only is it terrible. But my wife made me go to the stupid Polar Express okay. train in Chicago. Well, yeah, and that's it was dumb. The worst experience of my life. Yeah, it was terrible. That's what you're basing it off of. No, I, I don't that like movie. the movie either. The movie is very time. good. I watched it for the first time. Anything with Tom Hanks yeah. in it. What did you think about it? Really bad. And oh. the animation is so weird. It's because it's the first of its kind at the time. I, Nobody had that kind of animation. Jerry, what you're having right now, I like to call it, a good dinosaur moment. <laughs> that's fine. You're having a good dinosaur moment right now. To, anything Nobody with Tom Hanks in it, Express. anything with Tom Hanks in it is a national treasure. No, and that's it's my Nicolas number Cage. eight. That's Nicholas Cage. And it's very good. Oh. No. 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 I mean, I national love National treasure. Ni- Get it? Oh, no. Uh, no. You guys didn't get the joke. Because it was a that, shitty that, joke. That dad joke went well I'm over my head. I'm too good for you. Uh, <laughs> What's your I'm movie? too good for this podcast. What's your number seven? Number seven. Are you taking this podcasting show on the uh, solo? Are you just going rogue? We should take it on the road. It's funny you said solo and rogue. Rogue. Oh, wow. Rogue one. Road. Solo. Star Wars. My number seven is uh, Christmas Vacation. That's your number seven. I know people are going to have it higher, so we don't need to spend a lot of time with it. It's not one of my favorite movies. I'm not going to Why? Lie. I'm not a huge I'm not a huge fan. Um, but I gave it my number seven. Just it's fine. I like it. It's funny. I like Chevy Chase. I like uh Randy Quaid. I don't like him as much as Dennis Quaid. Hmm. Well, he's crazy. I kind of agree with you with the Quaids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've never been a huge fan of any of the vacation movies, honestly. Um, but Christmas yeah. Vacation is not my favorite of the vacation movies. Well, uh, I feel like if your amygdala was scanned, <laughs> they would find a problem with it. Really? I know it's everybody's favorite Christmas Probably movie. It's just not yeah. mine. It's not mine. Like, so uh, when I give you my top six, you'll understand. Number seven. Uh, get ready to fight me. Die hard. Yeah, I I don't buy it. It's not a Christmas movie. He goes to a Christmas party. So? It's set during Christmas. It's not about Christmas. Well, you well know I mean, what? Gremlins I try- isn't a, necessarily about Christmas, but it's set in Christmas. Set during Christmas. Yeah, okay. Well, that's on the edge. Die Hard's really on the edge. It is. That's been a widely been a, argued. Did, yeah, it, I mean, you can't argue with me. It's, that's like a main argument every year. Yeah, every year. So many is people say any, it is a Christmas Is there any movie. point in that movie where... It's Christmas dependent. Yeah, twelve oh one after he defeats the Germans. Is he German? It's Christmas. It's the greatest. Alan, Alan Rickman. It's oh the, yeah, he's German. Yeah, what's the, his name? Hans. Hans, Hans Gruber. Oh uh, yeah, Gruber. It's I the greatest remember. villain performance of any movie of all time. Uh, yeah, I'll, agreed. I'll agree. And beyond that, it's the first time probably ever where they take uh, except for the Joker, a uh, Bruce Willis, who is like a huge movie except. star at the time. And then he just gets woefully overshadowed by yeah. Alan Rickman and how yes. amazing he is. So, yes. And you actually root for the bad guy more than you root for the good guy. <laughs> Majority of the time. He's so fucking good, Alan Rickman. Yeah. So my 
biggest pet peeve with the whole Die Hard franchise is that they took this busted up, beat up cop. I don't know how many of the Die Hards you guys have watched, but I've watched all f- so four. I've watched four. Is just, there a fifth? I don't know. A fifth one came out, right? But he's just a normal cop. Right, he's a cop. And by the end of it, he's shooting one bullet at a helicopter and making it crash into 15 cars. And like jumping across he's, roof. Yeah, down. like what? No, he's not a super soldier. Die Hard number one is one of the best movies of all time. Yeah. Yes, set just, during, I agree. set during Christmas. It's set during Christmas. It don't make it a Christmas movie. It's on it's on TV every Christmas. <sighs> number seven, Jerry. My number seven, Jack Frost. Okay. Michael Keaton? Yes. I love Michael Keaton. That's a good movie. I'll give it to you. It's a very I don't care if you give it to me or but not, because this is my list. All that matters is me. Jerry. No, it doesn't. Do you want to get nuts? Jack Frost. I want to get nuts. Let's get nuts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to get nuts because Jack Frost is a really good movie. It's it, yeah, it's heartfelt. It's not in my top five. It's in the top he ten. He doesn't though. know how to work life balance, Jerry, but he learns. He learns by, by becoming a snowman. <laughs> Here, yes, he basically <laughs> just becomes a snowman. God, Christmas movies are so bad. They're weird. Um, number six is that where we're at? Yes. Uh, my number six is Home Alone Two. Oh, uh, what is it? Lost in New York. Yeah. Um, underrated Home Alone movie. Really, really, really love that movie. I like the pigeon lady. The pigeon lady is great. She's so good. Donald Trump helps him. Donald Trump helps him. Um, he shows him where the lobby is. Yeah. He runs in and he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, the lobby's over That's here. Right over there. Um, also, uh, what's the guy? Uh, Tim. Uh, what's the bad guy? in that? He's so good. He's in Clue. He's in Congo. Tim Curry? Tim Curry. Tim Curry. Curry. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. Tim Curry. I wish Tim Curry was in every movie ever. He's disturbing. He's so good. Um, he's disturbing. The parents are... I can't believe they let it's it happen sweet, again. He's just Jerry? a sweet transvestite. Yeah. Um, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, he's in... Yeah. Main character. Um, uh, they just did that on Goldberg's for the they Halloween did? episode. I haven't yeah, seen it. They did a Rocky Horror thing. I, I like that show. That. It's a good show. I, it's one of my favorites. Um... Home Alone 2, underrated, love it, I like it a lot. Okay. Is that the Sticky Bandit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. Yep. Bandit. Wraps his hand in tape. <laughs> yeah, smart. You're number six. Six. The Santa Claus. Oh, I like that movie too. Yeah. It was my number eight. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What about the Santa Claus 2? No. That's, I like. I still like it. What about like, the Santa Claus 3? I um, like it. I have the whole box set. I mean, I, I've How many of them, them are Tim Allen in? Is all he in of all of them? All of them, but... Uh, God, he made a lot of money on that. I Santa bet. Claus 3 has the... Um, Jack, Martin Jack, Short. Yeah, Martin Short's in it as like Jack, Jack Frost. Frost. Oh, yeah. I don't like it as much. Yeah. He was so good at Galaxy Quest. <laughs> he was. He That's was a really great good. great movie. Take it a turn. Super underrated. Alan Rickman's also in that. He movie. is in that. Very good. My number six, Elf. Oh, okay. I everybody likes Elf. Yeah, every single person in your the world. One, uh, you underrated it. I don't think I did. I might have it higher. That's fine. I I think it's middle of the road. Uh, <laughs> middle, maybe middle maybe of the road Christmas. A little bit less than middle of the road, but <laughs> like maybe in a sixth position. <laughs> maybe just like one less than middle of the road. <laughs> um, it's a great movie. Everybody quotes it. Everybody yeah. thinks of it at it's Christmas time. It's Will great. Ferrell. Yeah. Five. Number five for me is uh, Bad Santa. <sighs> okay. I absolutely love it. One of my favorite Christmas. We're in the top five now, so we're in the real time. Yep. Um, that's one I will watch every year. And Billy Bob Thornton is amazing. I agree. And it always makes me uh, tear up at I the end agree. of that movie. I agree. And it's incredible. Really great movie. I've never seen Bad Santa 2. They made a second one, right? It's not, yeah, don't, it's don't not good. Bother. Don't not good. watch it. Okay. Is yep. it Billy Bob Thornton? Yeah. He is in It's it. actually the same kid, too, but the kid's all grown up. Okay. Correct. Not interested. No. Um. So, number five, Alex. Uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The but animated? The Boris Karloff. Is it Boris Karloff? I'm pretty sure it's Boris Karloff. Like the vampire? Like Dracula? No. Was Boris Karloff... Dracula or Frankenstein? No, he both was, of them. No, he wasn't both of them. Yes, he was. Uh, he was not. 
Boris Karloff. Let's look. He was uh, Frankenstein. Bella Lugosi was Dracula. That's what you're confusing it. Frankenstein. He did Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah. And the mummy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did the mummy, too. Um, it was not Dracula. That was Bella Lugosi. Anyway, uh, the animated. No, he did. No, he Boris did Karloff do. did the Grinch. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I never night. said he didn't. I said he didn't do Dracula. No, but no you, you were question, questioning you the whole Grinch thing. Oh, yeah. That's okay. where that started. 1966. Don't give me those eyes. He did the Grinch. Uh, I, <laughs> yes, he did. I put the Grinch on my, uh, what do you call it? Honorable mention. Honorable mention. mention. Yeah. Well, you're silly. I like it. and It's a good one. I like it better than the Jim Carrey one. I'm with you on that. I don't. I mean, my kids have watched, the, again, another Christmas movie my kids were watching like three months ago. Yeah. Because it's on Netflix and they want. I know. And it's good. I welcome it because it's something different. It's not Toy Story. <laughs> right. Although Toy Story 4, we just got. Trash. God, it's good. Trash. It's so good. It's so good. You don't like Toy Story 4? Oh, I loved it. But I was cracking up. With oh, my, I my, get it now. I was cracking up my three-year-old son because he wasn't watching it, but he was like playing with his cars. And he just starts quoting. The movie. He Forky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm litter. I hate Forky. So Trash. That's what we we got. Oh, um, Disney Plus has a new uh Forky asks a question. Yeah, it's a little short. Three minute shorts. Oh, it's I good. didn't see that. It's good. Yeah. It's funny. Grant Grant started saying that the other day. We got Toy Story Four as a DVD. Yeah, so do we. Um and uh, I got it in four K. Their grandma got it for him. Better than yours. And no, ours is in four K. I made that up. I don't think it is. <laughs> but as soon as we got it, Grant saw it and he's like, trash, trash. <laughs> and I didn't get it at first. And I was like, why are you saying that? How did you not get that? I first? just didn't think of it. And I was like, oh, it's forky. Think of how many sporks are getting sold this Christmas. Oh, my God. Yeah, a lot. Spork Industries. They're you genius bought, you, because they put fucking garbage together now and they're going to sell them for 30 bucks a piece to people like us. You shouldn't have bought right. stock in Disney. You should have bought stock in Spork. In yeah. Sporks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. My Disney stock's up like 200 bucks. My it's number five. Crazy. We don't care about your stocks. I do. Bad Santa. Ooh, that was my number five. It was. And I completely agree with everything oh, you said. So good. Heartfelt. Love it. In the beginning, you think it's this like brash, like not like don't take it seriously movie. You think it's one thing, and then they but it's another thing, and then they wallop you, and it's another thing. They eat you right in the feels, and I love it. It's a very good movie. Number four, Chris. Number four is Scrooged, the classic Bill Murray. Ah, Bill Murray, just gotta love it. You do. It's one of my favorites. I haven't and seen I will it watch in a long that movie. time. Dur- it, to me, that's not a holiday movie. Like I don't. It is obviously a, a holiday movie. It is, but I don't need to watch that movie during Christmas. No, neither do I. Because it's so funny and fun. Yeah, I haven't watched it in a long time, so I can't tell you if it's that good or not. It's that good. I like Bill Murray though. I watched it for the first time last year. It's like up on Stripes level. Oh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. It's really good. No, it's not. I thought it was good. But it's an honorable honorable mention for me. Yes. Well, check out Scrooge because it's great. Anyway, number four, Alex. Uh, Christmas Story. This movie used to be probably my favorite Christmas movie of all time. But as I've gotten older, it just kind of... I don't know if I've seen it too many times or what. But it's still great. I still will watch it at least once Yeah. around Christmas. But... This is a movie that I was never watched much. Yeah. Was never allowed to watch. Really? really? Why? And what? they say fudge. I don't know. Like <laughs> it's just not one that I grew up watching and uh the by the time I watched it I just didn't I think you had to watch it as a kid. I don't know. I just never liked it. I've never been a fan of it myself either. Yeah. So you're wrong. So am I on? It's my number four. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Um, Number four. My number four, The Christmas Chronicle. 
Was that the one that Netflix was on? Uh, that was actually really good. Yes. Kurt uh, Russell. Kurt, Kurt Russell? Russell. Last year. Was that on good? Netflix. I never watched it. You didn't uh, watch it's, it? It's, it? No. It's a good... I heard it was good. Oh man, I, I I'm pretty sure Marley watched it. But I, I didn't watch really, it. really like. I really it. don't like Christmas movies. So I I try to not watch them as much as possible. I I've watched it probably four times, and it's very good. It reminds me a lot of the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. I mean, oh. it's a it's a different premise, it's a different story, but it just reminded me of that feel, like that feel of movie. I like Kurt Russell in the role. If I think he, it's phenomenal. If it was like Escape from New York, I'd be in. It's one hundred percent Escape from New York, but him as Santa Claus. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. I liked it though. I agree with you. I yeah, heard it. Was, it no, it I heard was it was great. great. I just didn't. I didn't. See I it. think it's very good. It, it was something new. It the was, kids it liked it a lot. Yep. Amy and I liked it a lot. Like we could all watch it. It's very good. I would say, Chris, you need to watch it. I don't care if you don't like Christmas movies. If you're it's weird. something that I need to watch with my family, then I'm out. Your amygdala. I don't really want to be around them. Well, your amygdala is broken. <laughs> um, so as tradition, I can no longer keep holding my tiny little camel bladder like you do. Okay. Oh so my gosh. I'm not shutting it off. So go pee. Just keep talking. Talk about Escape discuss. from New York. Escape from L.A. Actually, I like preferred a lot more than Escape you do. LA. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why nobody else believe, like, agrees with that, and I think maybe it's just because I saw it first. Why did you see that first? I think because by the time I was old enough to be engaged in those movies, that was what was out, and then I probably okay. went back and watched Escape from New York was the older one, right? Yeah, that's the first yeah. one. Yeah, that's the first one. So Escape from New York, which I guess you could kind of consider a Christmas movie. Was it? I don't know if it was or not. No, it wasn't. Because I don't remember. The any problem of these with things. continuing because to I'm record young. is that these microphones are going to pick up him peeing. Mm-hmm. So we should just stop. Yeah. And then we'll know how to trim back. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, because right after that, he says, um, I'm going to pee because my pee. little cattle bag. <laughs> my little cattle bladder, bag. My little cattle bag. <laughs> cattle bag. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you call it. That's, that's what, what we're calling your uh, scrot. Wait, ready? You don't hold pee in your scrot. Can I, can I start recording now? The crevasse. <laughs> the crevasse. Feel that with, with your, your mighty doom. Scrot. <laughs> what number? <laughs> What is the secret of your scrotum? Oh, whoa, okay. Wonder boy, why don't you take, take me far away from the mucky muck now? Anyway, let's uh, start recording. It wasn't recorded? No. no. No, none of that was. No, he doesn't record shit. He's bad. Terrible. And a one, two, three, one, two, three, go. So your amygdala <laughs> is broken. Yeah, that's right. Um, so um that was number four. Four, right? Yeah. Cause I what was I doing? Christmas Chronicle? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your your number three. My number three is elf. Oh, you're three above me because yeah. you always have to three up me. I think Elf is great. Um, it's fun. The humor is great. Um, I think it's like the world introduction to Zoe de Chanel. Oh, my ultimate crush. Your manic uh, pixie fairy. Was that what? Manic fairy, fairy pixie. That's <laughs> what they call her. She's like the original. Okay. That's like a. Uh, it's a. Who's they and why do they call her this? Manic Pixie fairy dream girl is what they call her, and people and other girls that act like that. Really? Yes, it's a real thing. I did not know this. I'm just I just have a crush on her as a Hollywood actress. My wife knows about it. It's not a secret. So you don't That's mind the commercial when she asks Google if it's raining outside? I don't remember. She's that. standing right next to a window. I don't remember that commercial. Hey Google, is it raining outside? And she's standing by a window. Doesn't matter. 
Still my crush. Um, it's called Manic Pixie Dream I, Girl. I don't need her to be smart. I'm going to explain it to you. It's a stock character type in films. So she's like the epitome of this? She, I think she's like the original, but um, I'm opening up the definition on Wikipedia. Um, film critic Nathan Rabin coined the term after observing Kirsten Dunst's character in Elizabethtown. Okay. Said that the manic pixie dream girl exists solely in the fevered imagination of sensitive writer directors to teach broodingly soulful young men to embrace life in its infinite mysteries and adventures. Yep, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Manic pixie dream girls are said to help their men without pursuing their own happiness, and such characters never grow up. Thus, their men never grow up. Right, that's me. I've never grown up, like physically. The manic or pixie mentally. dream girl has been compared to other stack characters. Uh, <laughs> examples. I'll give you some examples. All right. Okay, love it. <laughs> um, that you would know because uh-huh. I can't find any off the top of my head. Um, well, Zoe Deschanel in Elf is one of those characters. Okay, only in Elf. In though. everything she does, especially you, New Girl. Mm, have you seen Five Hundred Days of Summer? Yeah. That's good. That's a good movie. Right. It is a very good movie. She's not like that. In that anyway, movie. but what the point so is. So I just is proved it, you wrong. Elf You're introduces welcome. her to uh, you to her singing voice, which is amazing. She does. Yeah. That's the scene when you fall in love with her. And guess what? Zoe Deschanel sings very well. Manic. Christmas music. Okay. She has a mm-hmm. whole album with her dude mm-hmm. that sings with her. Who's her dude? Um, you I know her sister is that chick name. from Bones? Yep. Yeah. Everybody it's knows crazy. that. Well, literally everyone knows that. Anyway, it's, not new. it's a great movie. Um, Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Yeah. <laughs> great. <laughs> Thanks, it's Mr. Narwhal. It's my favorite part. Oh, Bob Newhart's in it. Come on, man. <laughs> I know. Bob Newhart is Ed, the what's his name? What's the guy's name? That's... Edward Norton. No. He's fighting people. No. Yeah. No. It's really good. Santa. It's played by Ed. Uh... Ed Helms. No. No. <laughs> No, <laughs> wasn't Damn he also it. in Cocoon? Oh, Jeff Goldblum, yes. Bob Hoskins. No, no, that's Hodgkin's lymphoma. No, about that. <laughs> um, All right. So, Alex, you're number three. Home Alone, the original. Ed Taylor, that can't be right. Home Alone, the original. Yes. Chris, we're done with that. Quit looking it up. I agree with you. It's a very good movie. What is that? Your number three? Mm-hmm. It's a great Christmas movie. It is a phenomenal Christmas. Very movie. good. It's like one of the best Christmas movies. Yeah, one that might that be, I've ever be one of the best. It's oh, literally boy. one of the best I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, oh, so I'm it's your guys' is number one, huh? That's something I <coughs> enjoyed. Yeah. So what's your number three, Jerry? Uh, well, my number three, the Santa Claus. Oh, wow. That's really high up there. for a Tim I love it. I watched it all the time as a child. I was obsessed with it. I thought that movie was really heartfelt regardless of what you think. It is. Yeah, that's good. Because of the whole divorce thing. I don't know why it, I said I never said it wasn't. No, I felt like you did. Okay. I felt like you were trying to slander me before you even knew I picked it as a number three. Do you and know how to dial 911? <laughs> I do. <laughs> and I need to when I'm around Chris because he's always trying to hurt me. Um, but succeeding usually, I think Tim Allen does a really good job. The little boy, that little boy that shakes the little snowball. He's good. Good. I don't think he was ever in anything ever again. I don't think he got that line from the movie, but (laughs) very disappointing. He was good. Oh, what'd you say? Do you know how to dial 911? Is that from the movie? Yeah. Cause I guess I don't remember that. Santa Claus lands on the roof and Tim Allen's freaking out and he goes in his son's room. He goes, I'm going to go outside. Do you know how to dial 911? Yeah, Dad. 911? I don't oh, remember that either. That's good. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Just throw this part out of the podcast. <laughs> what I what I really like is the uh, the elf, like the lead elf guy. He's in a lot of... Bernard? Yeah, Bernard. He's in a bunch of different movies. He's good, yeah. He's good. And He's shows. really good. That guy's in a lot of different shows and movies. He's a really good actor. I like Harold him a lot. Harold Kumar. Is he in that? They have a Christmas movie. He plays one of the uh, like room, roommates or best friends that come over and get high. With oh, them. well, he's good at that. 
Um, my number two is Home Alone. Home Alone. Yeah. No it's kidding. So good. It's amazing. Macaulay it's not Culkin. one that I. It's one that I loved as a child, but I didn't fully like realize how good it is until yeah. like the more and more and more you watch it. Exactly. It's like the so older good. I've gotten, that's why I put Home Alone two on my list because. Like, it's not as good, but it's, like, just the reverberations of how good the first one was. Yes. John Hughes, man. He's amazing. He is amazing. They just sold that house That's, a couple years ago. They did. Ago. Yeah. It's in Chicago. And how rich were the, was his was Mr. McAllister? Like, what are they I doing? I don't know what how he did. How can you fly your entire family and extended to family to Paris for Christmas? I want to know what he did. Yeah, I do. I want to know. Just so I can have, have that, that house. home. I think, I think he traded on the fucking... Black Chicago market merchandise exchange or whatever. No, he he like sold organs. I don't know what he did on the black market. That's the only way you can get that rich at that time. They had beepers. Whoa! <laughs> Didn't they have beepers? Pagers. Pagers. Beepers. I don't know. I called it a beeper too. Back in the day, it's a great movie. Alex, you're number very elf heartfelt too. Two number two for elf. Alex. Elf. Not elf. See? Elf. See Jerry. Other people. Yeah. yeah they get it. They get it. I guess I underranked it, but I just felt like there was better movies than that. This this is a movie that I watch every year. By far, yes, definitely. Since it's come out, I will watch it every year. Yeah, it's a it's it's firmly embedded itself. And honestly, when I first watched it, like I never thought it would become this bunch of a classic. Like I just thought, it, oh, this is a funny comedy. I didn't really even think of it that much as a Christmas movie. As much as just like a comedy. Yeah. And then it just cemented itself as a Christmas movie. And it has. Really. And I would probably put it as w- one of Will Ferrell's top movies ever. Mm-hmm. Um, that and Semi Pro. Uh, <laughs> no. No. What's the one? Um, no, Semi Pro. Where you at? Uh, Talladega Nights, Step Anchorman. Brothers, Anchorman. Yeah. Okay. Stranger Than Fiction is my favorite. That's the one I was going to think of. That's the one I was thinking of. That's that's my favorite. Other Guys is really good, too. I hated the other guys when I first watched it. But it's good. But it's good. But when I've, as I've watched it, like, because it's on TV all the time now. Yeah. Like, now I'll turn it on. Like, huh. Yeah. It's It's good. good. But to me, it's, that movie's all about Mark Mark Wahlberg. But you're right, though. Now when you think about it, Elf is probably one of his best movies. Yeah. Well, I still feel like Stranger, Stranger Than Fiction is the best movie. I said one movie. of his best movies. Yeah. I've been obsessed joke. with that movie since it came out. It came out when I was deployed. I watched it when I was deployed. Is that the one where he has the yard sale where he's sitting on his yard? No. Which one is that? That's uh, Everything Must Go. Yes. Yes, that's a good one, too. It is very good. Which is Stranger Than Fiction? What happens in that? So he wakes up and starts hearing an inner monologue, like an inner narrator <laughs> of his own life. And she starts, <laughs> this this woman starts narrating his life. Okay. So everything he does, he hears a narration to it. That's and right. then he starts to hear how he's going to die. Okay. And there's a woman alive in the Boy, world. I need to rewatch this movie. I don't remember any of this. Really? There's a woman alive in the world. She's a famous author who is writing a new book. And she is literally writing the book. As she goes. So and it's at, like Delirious with John Candy. I don't know. Or the book version of Truman Show. So she's she's writing this book, and he's hearing it in his head as narration. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And then she yeah. has to figure out how, uh, I can't remember his name, Walter Crick, I think, how Walter Crick dies. And she has to write the ending to the book, but then she already knows that he's a real person and that it's affecting him and... Like they end up finding each other. There's I think so you're much more rating that movie. Love it. I, I don't love think it was as good it. as you think. Well, no, I I know it because I'm reciting it to you. I watched it so many times. Is it as good like, as Daddy's Home? <laughs> yes, it's that could much be, better. That could be a Christmas movie. My number two <laughs> or Get Hard. I'm already or Home. <laughs> <laughs> get. <laughs> Land of the Lost, I really like too. Have you guys, I do really like Land of the Lost. Have you guys seen this Get is Hard? the holiday special, though. And my number two of the holiday movies okay. is Home Alone. Oh, nice. I love it. Macaulay Culkin has a podcast called Bunny Ears. I suggest you listen to it because you can really get an insight to Macaulay Culkin 
and that he's not. I don't know that I need an insight to Macaulay Culkin. He's not as weird. But I've heard him on Kevin Smith's podcast and Joe Rogan's. Yes. He's and very so, good on both of them. And that's where I got into the Bunny Years podcast. I, It's not one that I listen to often at all, but I started listening to him from there, and it it brought him back to reality for me. Like, he's not this eccentric, like, recluse hideaway he's person. He's kind of a normal dude. He's very very normal yeah you need to listen to him on all these podcasts because you will get a sense of how actually normal he is and that's what blew me away because i thought he was this weird crazy dude he's really not yeah no Um, he hasn't had like the child actor syndrome no he's he's very down to earth i mean he's a little bit strange i guess he's very like woke that's not strange that's normal jerry but no it isn't (laughs) <laughs> and <laughs> it's what you ain't woke i'm not i'm not if you ain't woke you're broke uh, no, i'm that too if you ain't woke you just sleep if you ain't woke you're a joke what's your number one chris <laughs> what's uh what's chris's number one my number one is holiday movie it's not even the best holiday movie of all time it's way above all the rest. Okay. I can't drum so long. It's uh, a Muppet Christmas Carol. A Muppet Christmas Carol. It's by far my favorite Christmas movie has been my entire life. It's incredible. Have you watched it? Yeah. Then you know how good it is. It's okay. It's really good. I, me it's personally. It's really good. It's really funny. The music's really good. I love the Muppets. It's great. I agree with you in some aspect in that the music is probably great. I have enjoyed the Muppets. I've just never been a big fan of them. The Muppet never Christmas Carol fan. specifically, though. Meh. It's really good. God, it's so chilly in here now. The hate. Like the yeah. cold. I mean, I don't know how you guys have worn a sweatshirt. The cold, hard hate that's going on right now. I don't think that you love the Muppet Christmas Carol as much as I do. I don't. No, I don't. It's the only Christmas movie I care to even watch. But again, we're going to revert back to Amygdala. You have a brain issue. (laughs) It's the only one worth watching to me. So go ahead. Alex. Christmas Vacation. Uh the number seven. You're silly, Chris. What's your What's your number one? My number one is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. All right, because that is the number one Christmas movie. It is probably widely known as the nation's. Well, first of all, it's number not one. It's not as good as Home Alone. There's no doubt about that. I guarantee you, it's the nation's number one Christmas movie. We're gonna take a poll. I guarantee you, of the nation, the nation's today number one Christmas movie is, is not National that Lampoon's movie. Christmas but it's, Vacation. I guarantee you it's in the top three. I think it'll be the nation's number one. We're gonna take a poll right now. We are nationwide. I think uh, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street might make an appearance. That's silly. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life yeah. might be up there. I understand You're on those. the moon. I understand that those are movies. And that those are things that people like. I don't think they're number ones anymore. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know. But anyway, it's probably the number one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is the overwhelming number one. I just don't think it has enough heart. It's, it doesn't need to have heart. It's it doesn't funny. Need it. It's comical. It has but no need, heart. I need heart on Christmas. No, you don't because uh, you don't do like not, Christmas. You I don't like do any of it. Heart. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, guys. All right, relax. Um, I want to be moved. And and moved. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, it's a funny movie. But it doesn't move me. It doesn't move my emotional center. It doesn't move the emotional needle. 
I feel like you weren't loved as a child, Chris, and that you. Are need, you going to say that move your emotional needle? And that you're looking for this love through movies I, that you just can't receive. I want like to you can't feel get it. things at Christmas, Jerry. Are you dead inside? I want to feel emotion. No, I want to laugh. Yes. And have fun with my family and be like, oh, everyone, look, the Merry cat Christmas. burnt the tree down. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy yeah. Hanukkah. Is there a cat in this box? So <laughs> your your legitimate argument ass. is you don't want to feel emotional weight at Christmas. No, I want to be happy with my family. But you can you can be happy with emotion. Not crying. Like He's... Home Alone's an emotional movie. It All you want to do is cry. Tear up. I can't tell end. if you're more Margot or Todd right now. When his mom, when his mom comes home, yeah, great. Well, she also left him because she's a terrible but it, parent. It's a, like it's a tearjerker of a scene. She also sent him to the attic <sighs> the because Christmas she didn't Carol, like him. Tearjerker. She's like, you ruin everything. Elf, go up to the attic. You cry every time and live by yourself. Scrooged, he learns the lesson of his life. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm trying to find my number five. Bad Santa, cry every time. All, all Clark he's wants just, to do is have a good old fashioned family Christmas. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a shtick. It's a slapstick comedy. comedy. It's a slapstick comedy. That well, ain't, that ain't like that. There's no emotional weight there, guys. What are you doing here? There is when he's watching the family. Videos. That's why it's a seven, not a one. It's no, a that, great movie. It's, a it's funny. It's a one, but it isn't a number one. It is you the number one. You need to be moved. You no. need to feel something. You're wrong. We're right. I feel happy when I watch that movie. Even if we are a two thirds majority, even if you're it's so a two thirds majority of the nation. <laughs> Both of you, you're superficial. If it's a two thirds majority of the nation, we have won. <laughs> the guy who doesn't like Christmas. Yeah. Christmas. I don't like all. anything. You with guys Christmas. are superficial. Maybe I like it more than you. Maybe you do. Well, then you should have put it as your number one. Yeah. No, I, I put, don't care I put about movies it. that move the center needle and move it over. Which center needle? The emotional heaviness, weight, the, life. Every time I watch it, it puts me to happy. Yep. There That's, you go. I don't need to be sad every maybe, time I watch a movie. Hey, it's not sad. Maybe you're, you're being sad. No. Maybe you need to go out. <laughs> you're like, I need something I'm that makes me sad out. every time I watch a no, movie. No, it's not about being I sad. I need to be sad. It's about... It's about overcoming. It's like, I need to feel something. Instead of hurting myself, I'm going to watch this movie. That's what you do. Okay. That's ridiculous. I have some uh, honorable mentions. I do, too. Can I mention them? I have two. Should we uh, alternate, or I just mention them all? One of them of mine has already been mentioned. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Uh, I have two honorable mentions that are Christmas movies. Then I have three movies that are set during Christmas, but aren't necessarily Christmas movies. Right? Yes. Number one, a uh, Christmas movie that's an honorable mention for me is, um, I, one of them was Grinch, but I'm not going to go there. Um, Holiday Inn with uh, Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire. Uh, boo, that's an old one. It's a really good movie. Um, I never even heard of it or watched it until I lived with uh, my one of my old roommates who I guess grew up watching the movie and okay. he just loved it and he bought it and we would watch it. And get super drunk. And <laughs> okay. uh, I, I ended up liking the movie a lot. Okay. Um, but better than that is I wanted to get it on the list. I really did. It's probably better than Jingle All the Way, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Um, it's an old, old movie that I grew up watching. It's called uh, Babes in Toyland. Or another name for it is March of the Wooden Soldiers. Yeah, I know that. It's a movie. Laurel and Hardy movie. It's actually on Disney+. Plus. Um and it is a great Christmas movie about uh, Laurel and Hardy uh, live in this toy land. Yeah. And um, there is like these evil, I don't know. It's a great movie. Babes of Wooden. I don't. Babes of Toyland doesn't sound like it should be a movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That, that sounds like a completely no, different No, I, I know that movie. Be watching. But uh, they also renamed it March of the Wooden Soldiers later on, I think, because of that reason. Yeah, I know I've seen it. Yeah. It's, really good. I don't remember. They live in a toy land. Toy land. Mm -hmm. Toy. I think that might be where that song comes from. Beautiful boy and girl land. You know that song? Don't. Toy land. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Um, anyway, th- th- those are my honorable mentions: A Holiday Inn and March of the Wooden Soldiers, or Babes and Toilin. Uh, my movies that are set during Christmas that aren't necessarily Christmas movies are um, Edward Scissorhands. Yes. Love that movie. That is one of mine. Is that one of yours? Yes, it is. That probably could be a Christmas movie. It's I agree. Really on the on the line there. Um, and um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, I didn't have that. Is uh, a great I love movie, that movie set during Christmas. And all Shane Black's movies are also set during Christmas, like uh, Iron Man three. Not Predator. Um, not not Predator. That's right. Um, there's another one. But you said all. Okay. So you're wrong. A bunch of Shane Black okay. movies are set during Christmas. Thank you for correcting that, Chris. Um, what's the other one that's set during Christmas? Um, is Lethal Weapon set during Christmas? Yes. Yes. Die Hard is. Well, he didn't. I don't think he did Die Hard. No, he didn't. He but did I'm Lethal saying. Weapon, which is set during Christmas. He also did Last Action here, which is not set during Christmas. I love Last Action. We all know, Jerry. You had the set, play I set when you were a kid. Love it. it. I have talked about that multiple times, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. I think they're making another one. Um, mine, mine was going to be uh, Die Hard. We already talked about it. I, I do think it's a Christmas movie. Uh, Edward Scissorhands, yes, is a Christmas movie. And the one I've argued, if you look back, Edward and, Scissorhands is a super good movie. If you have look, you gone back and watched that recently? Uh, not recently, but I've it's watched very, it a, so many times. Very good movie. If you go back into the uh, Snarf Talk archives, archives, go to back, go go to back last Christmas. <laughs> go to back, go, go to back, go to back, go back in time, go to back, go to back in time, go to back to the last Christmas, go to back, back man. <laughs> I feel like a reggae singer. Last December, <laughs> December of eighteen, if you will, I have posted. A picture of Batman Returns. I oh, was gonna I be forgot s- about Batman Returns. So mad if you didn't put Batman Returns in there. I had it on my list and I crossed so it mad. out. Well, that's silly. Why would you ever cross it out? A Christmas movie. That's because it is a Christmas movie. It is a Christmas it's Christmas movie. set during it's Christmas. Set during Christmas. But it's Oswald not a Christmas movie. Cro- Cobblepot. But is there is trying a to be mistletoe the scene, right? Yes. There's a bunch of things that revolve around Christmas in that movie. <laughs> Look up any top 30 Christmas movie, and I guarantee you Batman Returns will be in it because it's a Christmas movie. And But it wasn't in your top 10? It wasn't. I wanted to put it in my top 10. The only reason I didn't you is were because afraid of me. you attacked me physically before the show. <laughs> I've been abused by Chris I didn't do so that. long that I didn't put it in there. I struggled putting gremlins in there because I felt like I was going to be accosted. Alex, honorable mentions. Um, so two of them were Scrooged and Bad Santa. They're great movies, but they're not ones that I'm going to watch every hmm. Christmas. Well, you won't be invited back. I did <laughs> No. Sorry, they're my number one and number two. That's oh, right. Anytime okay. uh, anybody comes on, it's their last yeah. appearance. <laughs> it's true. Um, Dude's the, been on his last appearance for the, multiple times. Other one, which not like. a lot of people have watched. It's a very poor rated movie. It's called Mixed Nuts. And it has Steve Martin and a very, very young Adam Sandler. Oh, my it. God. I remember that movie. Ah, he, it rings a bell. I know Steve Martin's in it, but Adam Sandler's in that movie? He he plays the ukulele the whole time. <laughs> I remember that movie. I feel like that's his daily life. It, uh, Lee Sh- Schreiber's in it. Juliet Lewis oh, is in it. I love that dude. Liev Juliet oh, Lewis. Oh, um, Juliet Lewis. And Yuck. So he basically he plays a suicide prevention hotline. That's right. And they're getting evicted. I remember and that. And it's all oh. about, like, Trying to movie. figure it all out. And then there's the the Lakeside Strangler or something like that. And they end up killing them right outside their door. It, it's bizarre. So it's, it's all weird. it's just set during Christmas, though, right? I don't know. Steve Martin's got a Christmas hat on in the. In the it's yeah. on Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's what it is. Yep. I'm not. Isn't there. Uh, beholden to well, your guys' rules. Ben Affleck movie at Christmas. Like Phantoms, maybe? Ben Affleck, the bomb and phantoms, yo. G- Geely. Well, I think we've reached the end. Have we? 
Yeah, it's two hours, 32 minutes. I think we'll call our quits here. But we're going to do a Patreon episode after this. We got time. Okay. We do. We have a little bit of time, yeah. We do. So uh, for this week, you've you've got the holiday episodes that we've finally... Thanks for sticking with us, guys. <laughs> we finally got it out to you. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, we don't have any... Uh, we we want to be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? A big thank you to Alex yes, for joining the podcast a big this week. thank you to Alex. We don't have any advertisers for you this week, but we do want to mention patreon.com slash snarf comics. If you are listening to this... Wait, I got one... Uh, one advertiser that is going to give us a slice of pie. They're going to give us like literal pie or financial yeah. pie? No, a slice of like uh, pizza. Vagina? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Pizza pie. Okay. A pizza um, pie. A pizza pie. Pizza pie. Is Baba Luke's. Oh, Baba Luke's. In oh. Marseilles. So I was... Um, I'm a big fan of Baba Luke's, and I'm a big fan of the uh, I've Kaminsky never, family. Yeah, the Kaminsky's. So uh, Molly sent me some messages and said, like, you guys didn't put. So apparently she listens to podcasts often. And she's like, you didn't put Baba Luke's in there. I for said, what? And I said, oh, for I'm the best pizza. For the best pizza. Oh, my God, that's right. And I they said, have really good pizza. I've never had it. So I have before. had it a lot. And uh, not that long ago, uh, Cash... And Grady were on the same team. Yeah. They had uh, their playoffs in... Playoffs? Marseille. The playoffs. Yes. Talking about playoffs? In Marseille's. And we went to Baba Luke's afterwards. Did and you? And they were just closing. But... Um, um, Go ahead. Nick's dad. <laughs> I don't... I was trying to not say names. Oh, but, okay. Uh, Nick's dad was... Uh, he owns the place. Yeah. And uh, he let us come in and order pizza. And it was just super good. We sat down. We all had pizza. So I've never it's had like, their pizza. They've but... expanded recently. They've doubled the size of the place. So you can eat in there. They have a eat-in okay. restaurant. It's well, really good. What she said was... And I'm going to make sure that she does this. She said she's going to get us pizza for us to review live while we record mm -hmm. i'm going to be, bring a pizza in we eat it they have really good pizza it. but like their main thing is like too they have like really good italian beef sandwiches cheesy, like, cheesy beef fried drink milk you're from like baba <laughs> luke's territory yeah you're the front you're the cheesy baba beef. luke guy alex is from uh he's from the south side of ottawa ottawa, ottawa. he's only like probably seven miles away he's from up baba over luke's. there in the ontario i, I work two minutes away yeah you should eat every day of your life you son of a bitch well why don't yeah. you <laughs> son that of costs a, a lot more money you son of a bitch if, if you guys get a pizza well sure can I, I just I, recommend I, yeah a jardinier italian beef pizza that's what i'm gonna tell it's, everybody it's else. the best of both worlds i mean that sounds that like sounds exactly what i want it's so. the best of the italian beef and you get the jardinier, right. and you get to try the pizza. Okay. Molly, we're going to see if Bob Luke's measures up to the old Geo. And you're going to get a live review. I mean, in real time, we're going to tell you we're gonna how, be like how it the, tastes. Uh, what's the guy from uh, Barstool Sports? We're going to be like that guy. Yeah, Dave Portnoy. Yeah, Dave Portnoy. El Presidente. Yeah. I follow him. I know what you he does. You would follow him. You're such a douche. I know. I know. I <laughs> am. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> episode 52 was... In the can. A good one. Jeez. In the can. I feel like the the last episode for your first year should be a little bit longer. It is. Yeah, it is. I agree. I agree. And it's so, Christmas themed. Buckle in and pause it if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. But thanks for letting me come. Merry Christmas. Sit back. Strap it down. Happy Thanksgiving. Mary everything. Mary hey, and we're going Hanukkah. Kwanzaa. We're going right from here. If you like the energy going on, I do. We're gonna go right into a Patreon episode, and we're all gonna sing. So if you're not yeah. subscribed to Patreon, this is your time. Yeah, five dollar level gets you bonus podcasts. Your time is now, now. now and guess what? I just finished Harvest, so my now, full time now, job for now, the next now. four months <laughs> has become Snarf Talk Podcast. Snarf Talk Podcast, and you Snarf gotta comments. get up in the morning and go get. Poof. Creating, yeah, that's true. Creating a new studio, creating a new studio, and finishing uh, uh, Jetpack Samurai. Yes, that's oh my yeah, focus that's a big one. Like, that, should be, I, that should be number one. <laughs> I need two days to spread fertilizer, and then I need a week to strip till, and then I need a week to spray, and then I'm good. Well, that's silly. 
It seems like a and long then time. I need two months to haul. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's never ending. And and you're never going to be around, and I'm going to do all of this by so myself. About, so about two weeks after this comes <laughs> out, you guys will be ready. Two weeks of equipment or two months of equipment maintenance, and then you got guys for that. Yeah. You do. All right. So, see you guys later. Yeah, for Snarf Talk uh, this join week. Join us on Patreon for our next episode. Correct. For Snarf Talk this week. I'm Jerry. <laughs> Chris. I think I'm Alex. See ya. See ya. See ya.